Uh, just wrapped up with Daniel Godfidi Lopez. Uh, he's from California, but he's local here in Spokane, a muralist, a painter, uh, just started oil painting four years ago. You wouldn't even believe it. You'd think this dude had been doing it his whole life. This man is beyond his time. Please check out this episode. Uh, we deep dive into, you know, his upbringing, the challenges, the triumphs. I love you guys. Come on. Let's go. Godfidi. look like a painter crew right now <laughs> dude we would we, we like can't. you guys just went out and buffed a wall dude, out you know we, dude, i feel like we we're, we're those guys huh we're them stoners <laughs> sneaking off freaking look, painting look, freaking look, houses yeah. there we go look at our hats yeah damn that's gonna be funny i'm gonna we are live we, we are live now we are with the um, so we got called out for looking like a painter crew <laughs> and i feel like it this is, what are you looking for oh, bud are they over there on that side oh Yep, sorry. Bro, it's like, if bro, if it wasn't efficient. an artist, a muralist, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody no. else would have noticed. Yeah, he knows the painter crew. Yeah. yeah. I go into uh, Home Depot, or, you know, and I see all the painters in there. It's like, mm -hmm. Sherman Williams. Those are my boys. Yeah, yeah just covered in paint on their stuff, you yeah. know. Like, oh, man, and they, they'd be blown away. To just you see, you see this guy coming in to get some stuff, and they're just like, oh, what's he doing, you know? Yeah, what's all he gonna, these odd colors. He's just going to paint some look, little thing, yeah. and then you just masterpiecing out here, People dude. probably know who you are, like, if you went into a Sherman Williams, right? Some of those places? Or? I try I, I try to make friends with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, everywhere I go, especially if I'm a frequent, I try to... Um, her. Probably too much to my own detriment. Just <laughs> meeting people like you know, like too close and too personal all the time. Yeah, I can't help it. It's the artist in me. Yeah. No, nah, but you need to I let it flow, dude. Too. You just gotta be. You gotta be you out there, and that's what makes you special, dude. You know, is just be able to make that connection because a lot of people are just closed off. Mm -hmm. Don't want to even like look people in the eyes. I Don't want to shut it off. Yeah, because it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? It. Like, why is he so friendly? <laughs> what does he want yeah. from me? What's his intentions? Yeah, I might have some though. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you doing yeah. with that blank uh, wall on your building right there? Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. How does that usually work? Does it is it like do you ever see just like an opportunity and then approach somebody or do you wait to be approached to do a mural or something? Um I will pursue something if I think it's worth my time, but nowadays um I don't really have to approach anybody. Like I get emails all the time for business stuff and I most spend most of my time oil painting. Yeah. Wow. Waiting for you the know. emails. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I mean, I when I first started painting, there was like, um, what's the place, Quicks Barbershop? Yeah. Oh, with yeah. the women driving. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, knocked on doors for that mural, and uh, I knew I wanted to paint it, so I approached businesses. And then the one over here with the, the hands, the Sistine Chapel got the... Oh, yeah. Yep. Those ones, uh, I was knocking on doors. I was actually hit up when it was the the boots right here. Yeah, I hit them up first, and it w I didn't know a lot about. I'm gonna be honest about reaching out to bu building owners or emails or nothing like that. And it's I was a little offended. I was like, man, I was gonna paint an adult mural for you guys. You guys don't even want to hear hear me out or not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was just a young cat out there, like chip. They on didn't my see the value, and you were just like, you were just green when it comes to like, cold call. Yeah. yeah and selling like, your business. Had to get through to them. Yeah. Yeah, and then I painted the one right here, so it worked out. 
Yeah, that's what makes that's what makes the old spot be like. Well, hey, what, I see you yeah. did that. Like, so like, what do you already have the vision? So like, when the, with the girl driving, like, did you already kind of you knew what you wanted to paint on it? Like, you were like, hey, I could put this here, and then that's kind of how you would approach people. This is literally just I'm just so curious yeah, to how that, that like that spot. Um, I remember I walked in there to Quicks, and I was like, yo, I'm an artist, and I painted some stuff. Uh, I don't remember what I had painted by then. That was 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure I had to have referenced something. Um, and they were looking at me. They're like, they're like, go next door to the Tanya Buns place. You know what I'm talking about? Right next door? Yeah. Because she, that's the building. You know Linda Lou? That's the building owner, right? Yeah, well, so there's a guy, uh, the owner's name is John. Oh, okay. But next door is Linda Lou. Yes, I have met her. So I peeked my head in there, and she's like, may I help you? And I, like, go in there, and I'm like, hey, what's up? And she has, like, all the rings and her hair. You know Linda Lou? She's, like, a character. Know. Really? Yeah, so I go in there, and I'm like, I'm so-and-so. And this is what I do. I would love to paint a mural over here because, you know, there's a perfect spot. I noticed the, there keeps being, like, a tag on there. And she's looking. She's like, let me get a hold of John. Let me talk to John. She's like, you do beautiful work. Let me get a hold. And and so mm. took a few weeks. And he's like, well. And I had sent him the design. And he's like, well, can we add so-and-so? I was like. That's the thing is I'll do it for free. You help with the supplies. But if you want any logo advertisement, then it's going to cost X amount of money. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, let's just do it for free. Then. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'll help with the supplies. So um, that one worked out. Luckily, that one worked out. So how many um, people have you pitched at that point in time? Like you were because. Like you were getting your, like you were kind of turning this thing, like you were doing murals for a long time yeah. for free, right? Or like when a did a little bit, a li- little half and half, because I was still doing, um, trying to make money and like get ahead as much as I could. And so I would take custom jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. When I would do a free mural, it would kind of jumpstart that hype again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I would do any paying jobs I could because I was still on the bus at that time. I think. So it had to be tough when you like didn't have a lot of work to show like yeah. those first times you were going out there like pitching people. Do you remember like your first paid mural? OK, so I had um, worked on there used to be a mural on Ash. You remember it was a long graffiti one that was. Um, Got the rabbits. No, if you're coming down Ash, mm-hmm. uh, before you hit Broadway, on the right-hand side. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. It was on a fence? It was on a whole building. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I can't think of it. So I did that mural, and it was honestly my first mural. <laughs> no, that was the first mural like, that you, you had ever done? And I paid a mural, I was like. I want to give it a try. <laughs> so what have you? What had you done at that point? What was the that, biggest thing that you had that you had painted? That was my biggest. But I mean, before it was a whole that, block. before that, like where you just had something in a book, but you had done like a oh, picture a sketches. Like what I was kind of winged it on that for real? Oh, but as far as art, I'm just general? curious. Is like what? Like you went from what? Like a page to a freaking building? Uh, I used to have these little sketchbooks that were they're like this big. So when I came into town, um, I was about a year and a half clean and sober, and I would wash dishes at Indaba and Broadway on in the afternoon. Okay. And I would sit down at a different coffee shop, Bruce Bros, right here by the bus stop, mm-hmm. in the morning about for about an hour and draw in these books every single day. And I had a few bigger sketchbooks with like graffiti okay. and stuff. Um, but I was going through a lot of mental anguish and coming off all these psych meds. They were really messing with my head. Um, I didn't understand how to like navigate in society is so much different than the streets. You yeah. know, like it just didn't make any sense. And so I was going through all this mental anguish trying to heal and like hurting and depression. And I started doing these kind of outlandish drawings. And I put them online, and people would like 
react to them. And it was a little taste of like what the power of art is, you know, and it was like a cry for help at the time because yeah. I was still, my mind was still like a child's mind or something, I think, because I only had about a year clean and sober. So you weren't even thinking about, oh, I'm going to try to make money. I'm going to do anything oh, like no, no, this. No, you're no, just, no, you're no. just, this I'm just is therapy. Drawing. I'm just drawing. I'm not trying to, I don't know what that future has for me. You know, wow. I have been here like a year and a half. I don't know what to think. I had never lived a life. Like if you think. Mm. My whole life was with a needle in my arm, like, just waking up, trying to get high, dope sick. And so for me to, like, I just didn't know what it looked like, to be honest. Yeah. And this was at 31 years old, so I would draw, and I was like, okay, I kind of got something here. People mm-hmm. would tell me, they'd be like, you're really good, you're going to do something with that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And so my whole life, even in, like... um middle school people all my friends would be like you're gonna be a famous artist I'm like i don't know what that means at the time i was still pretty good but i would still go home at the end of the day my grandma live with my grandma who's taking care of my great grandma who has alzheimer's so that's a thing and then her brother we live with is like a a functioning alcoholic wino so at the end of the day he'd come get drunk and be drunk around the house and i'm coming home from school and then, like, my mom would show up, and she would cause a big scene because she's, she's dope sick, trying mm-hmm. to get high, and I don't understand what's happening. What that is, mom. yeah. Uh-huh. So I got all this stuff coming at me, and people were telling me I'm going to do something with my art. And you're like, Bro, really? So that was a crazy... <laughs> like, like, I'm ex- I'm dealing with real stuff. Like, I don't stuff, even understand that. And then I'm got to go out into the hood and, like, live my life with all these homies and just everybody when I'm not in school. So that definitely didn't seem realistic that you that in your mind that you would ever be f- a famous painter or whatever that means. You know, it was but to even yeah. think because this was also the 90s where you didn't have an example of success in front of you. Like I think kids have an advantage these days. They can look on a phone and see someone doing good. Yeah. And then when I was growing up, you had who was ever your circle in this little neighborhood. That's your world. And the people, yeah, the people that were doing good was like the older homie, you know, some OG that's slang in yeah. or like any kind of li- older person mm-hmm. was just the, the example. And all the main older people were, you know, like slang in or, or gang banging or something. And you don't, we just didn't have an example. Nobody's going to college. I mean, I'm sure there's people that graduate, but when I'm coming home at the end of the day, I'm seeing a bunch of stuff, you know, um, and even the success that you're seeing, it's through this, like, yeah, through the gang shit or through, like, selling drugs or something like that. So it's if you even saw anything realistic, it's like, oh, well, I'd have to do this because the successful people that I see, this is what they do. Mm-hmm. And I definitely feel like because there was still some kind of need for a mom and a father because yeah. my grandma was raising me, I, de- I definitely just mimic their actions. and like, oh, well, they're using... You know, they're out there. That's doing, what they want me to do. Being free. Yeah, I could just go do it, too. I could go be free and just run the streets and do my thing. So there was no, like, effort to try to hide it from you or, or anything like that or, or create some type of, like, a household where you didn't know? Um, the crazy thing is my grandma was the most straight edge. She, like, didn't belong to our family. You know what I mean? Everybody else was a wreck, an addict, a something um, so she was running around trying to hold it all together. Yeah. So she mm-hmm. was like the person everybody run to because she would take care of all of us when we were in trouble. You know, she had a big heart. But um, for me, it was just like, well, I was starting to use and it all just just snowballed so quickly. Like before I knew it, I'm dropping out of high school. You know, I have so many Saturday schools from ditching and just being a bad kid at school and just things that I'm never going to graduate. Mm-hmm. So they took me to the continuation school and you got to kind of either get dropped off there or something so on the other side of town. And as soon as I get dropped off, it's like, Scourge, I'm not even going to school, you yeah. know, yeah. and just go get high. And um, that was where my art pretty much ended for a long time. Right around then. So when did you start using? Was that that was pre high school or did did it start in high school? Uh, when you're your first year in high school, 
or middle school. How old are you right there? The freshman, you're 13, right? Yeah, that was probably, but am I right? probably about time. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, so I was smoking weed, bunch of skater kids, and this OG guy, Dan, at the time, he was selling us what was supposed to be opium, is what he called it, mm-hmm. O, and we started smoking that on weed. And about a year later, he gets busted in the pa- in the paper, you know, like a local heroin dealer, and we're smoking it. But we're just kids. We didn't really think too far into it. But a year later, we're all strung out. And I'm at the point where, you know, you have to choose between the weed or the heroin. I'm already strung out, so I want to get that extra high. Mm-hmm. And I, all my friends were like skater kids, so they're just like, kind of nice kids smoking weed and stuff Mm -hmm. um and i started shooting dope shooting it i don't remember who exactly introduced me to the needle but once i started doing that all my friends the other friends started doing it Uh. so you got a group of 15 16 year old kids big old group of us that are all strung out on heroin and i'm like trying to just kind of hold up hold it together and hide it as much as i can from my grandma and she don't want to see it too because she saw like my mom was so bad you know still out there on the street well you didn't even know did you even know you were getting into it like that like it's just like that's what's kind of crazy is that this could have happened to to like anybody Mm -hmm. you know because it's like oh we're just smoking weed and you know, before then, you knew it, you had to make a choice between what went the weed or what went on top of the yeah. weed. And then it was like, wait, was we don't high. even need the weed anymore. I, and I could see that being like, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Fuck. So. Um, so you were drawing kind of before that when you were smoking weed and stuff, you were just you were you were at, in school and stuff, just like drawing and like. Bro, they had to take my colored pencils from me. Like, it's all I would do in school, you know, was draw. So that's why people saw that. They saw that in you, oh, and they were like, yeah. damn. Because it's pro- it's a mix of your talent at that time, even just as a kid, but then also, like, your passion to want to do it, you know? Like, not yeah. putting it down. Like, damn, every time we see Daniel, he's just fucking drawing something. Yeah. All, all kids at a certain age have, like, this really, like fork in the road moment where like they're really good at something but then they put it down to pursue mm-hmm. something that was out of left field mm-hmm. because really their attention span or like they're they're like i don't know what to call it but like you're just learning really rapidly yeah. you know what i mean at a certain age right when you're becoming yeah. a small teenager you know you feel like you're watching your kids do that kind of five years old yeah. so it's not learning. he's not there yet uh, but he's at a stage of it. that <laughs> yes he's at yeah. a stage of that and i and honestly i remember that too because i didn't start smoking weed until i was a sophomore in high school maybe i, I might have been a junior but like I remember everyone transferring over to everybody smoking weed like right freshman year. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And I was playing football and I was just uh, like, this is, you know, I could have done a lot of things. And then finally I started smoking. But, you know. Well, I can relate to this story in the sense of like I remember being a kid and smoking weed and just kind of being dumb. Right. Like just oh, I'm just buying weed. I'm just smoking weed. I don't know. Yeah. Were, and you, were you pre high school or no? So it was high school. It was when it was you when started. I in yeah, high it was school? like it was like junior high. I wasn't or well, I was in junior high, no middle school. It okay, was kind okay. of weird where I was at. But it was like there wasn't like a lot of pressure. And then like when I went to high school, it was like big pressure, all the yeah. fucking this weird pressure and shit. <laughs> but same thing. Somebody was like this dude was like, oh, we got this red rock opium. We sat, you know, and we were putting it on the weed and smoking it, but I don't think it turned out to be heroin. I just think that it turned out to be like nothing. Yeah. But then I could see where this could easily have been yes. yep. a similar situation to kind of what happened with you, where you're just like, you're just out there. I was just snorting shit and doing I was just, I don't yeah. know. What is this? What is, oh, whatever. Yeah, 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 you guys are yeah. doing it. All right. Uh-huh. Everyone goes through that phase where they trust like nobodies. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yep. That's why it's such a <sighs> testament to the all the shit that you've been through. That you're fucking sitting here looking and doing the things that you're doing right now, man. Looking good, fucking yeah. killing it. Like, it's it's honestly that's that's the shit where somebody gets to look in their phone and see you and say, "Damn, yeah, that's crazy." Um, like I get, you know, because like you said, it's like people can look right in their phone and see somebody who's doing something they're trying to do and they're doing it, you know. And you can be like, "Damn, okay, yeah, yeah. I can do this." Mm-hmm. That's what I try to share the the human side of what I do a lot. Like I try to share a lot of the human moments that are 
like less of a um not like an influencer but less of a uh you know something that's made but like i'm a real person over here that's just painting trying to yeah. make it through my day and i think that if you see my art you might think that i had some kind of easy life went through a lot of schooling had a lot of money or something mm -hmm. and i was, I was kind of contemplating this was maybe i'm trying to compensate or something from my past like if i can make the best art kind of like a proof to myself that yeah. i got away from it yeah. does that make sense it'll it raise your value like, yeah you know like i feel you because i always got respect in school which was a crazy thing for the art like everybody all the groups everybody just mm. loved it and uh, just a lot of love and respect over the art um so that first skater crew that smoked the weed that was the skater crew i had a few different groups mm -hmm. Then I had the my and these were like the tagging crews. That was my first tagging crew, um, and then and they were more taggers. Um, a few of them have passed away. Now they're like moms and dads. Really, you know, like clean up their life and have kids. You would never know. Really? Yeah. Nice. My friend Maya, she's like a total mom. You would never know. She's yeah. just like. She was part of the mom and stuff. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, like she's out there with the fat cap, just crushed, like doing big old throws. But you would never know now if you looked at her, you know? That's awesome. It's funny. That'd uh, be so funny. We, we had, so that was uh, the PA Paint Addicts, J, uh, uh, what was it? CLK, Crazy Little Kids, or OCR, Our Crew Rocks. Mm -hmm. That was the skater kids. Then I had another party crew. My cousin lived in Oxnard, which is like a neighboring city. Um, and they were POT, JDI, pimps on top, just do it, people of tomorrow. What? And so I would go hang out with them, and they were like a party crew. They were more like this like southern, Ox they were like this Oxnard kind of gang. Mm -hmm. Like they go out and sell stuff and whatever, party all the time. and. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the third crew was the high school one. Uh, and they were like the essays. And so that was a JNC, Jealousy Never Conquers, Jock Nobody, Just Not Caring. And these were the dudes that really kind of got me into art because um, when they, it was like we would. Watch, just, oh, yeah. We just would, want you to be. Want them to be able to hear me? Good. Hear me? Uh, yeah, we would uh, sit in front of the the office during nutrition and and share our black books and pass them around and when i i open those things bro this was the first time i seen art that was like wow you two pages which is letters and characters and colors and everybody was super good um color uh he was like uh he was the leader he was uh, also like rapped and he was a dj uh adrian um I think he was Filipino. He did these super dope, almost like anime styled characters, but they were just really unique. Uh, Arrow was like this white boy with long hair, and he would do these big, all huge characters. He was really good. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. But, I know. Yeah, no. And so I had all these different like groups that just kind of wanted me around because I could paint. You know what I'm saying? And I was an artist. And so that was my first real taste of of art. Um, and that's when you were like a kid, what, right? Yeah. And also, like, what, what, like, made them different groups? Is it because, like, you went to school and so that was a group? But then, like, how were they differentiated in your neighborhood? Like, why mm -hmm. were you getting around different groups? Oh, so the skater groups were, like, was kid. There was a few different skate crews in my neighborhood. Mm. And I... If you kicked it with one, you just kind of know everybody, I right? Mm -hmm. So I was with the skater crew because that was one of my youngest groups. Um, I was, like, associated with them through a friend, and then mm -hmm. I became friends with all of them. I see. Then the high school group, they were everybody was kind of shipped in from different areas. Yep. So I only had one friend that was from my neighborhood that really put me onto all of it, and his name is Moore. And he's still about bombs trains. He's my age. <laughs> it was seventh letter, and he does these. Uh, yeah, that fool's dope. Uh, but he was the one that got me in with the other artists. To me, it was a whole different level. And then the third one that was 
um, in a different city was my cousin mm. and his friends. Okay. And so, so you'd go hang out with your me cousin. Up on the weekends, and they had the party crew, and we'd be up to no good. But I could do these dope POTs and JDIs and That'd stuff. That'd be cool. And so they, yeah, I'd go paint for them. Um, for a kid that didn't grow up in a big city, like, hearing stories about it, it sounds so fucking fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, was going to say, is it, was, there, was there a different element to it in the sense of like when you were doing it when you weren't supposed to be doing it versus getting paid to do it? Um, I think it was, I mean, I still love graffiti when I go into cities. Um, I love seeing it, but it was reckless, you know, like I, that was my first, um, arrest was a graffiti. I was going to say, cause you're like an outlaw. You're out here running around. Yeah, You and... could got too much to lose. Like I seen uh, one one dude, I remember he graduated high school and he was so good, this full logic. I remember we had a graffiti art, it was Hobo Jungle. And we're just young kids and we go out there to Hobo Jungle, bro. And they had all the these big, huge freeway walls just stacked all the way down. And I remember we turned the corner and logic was doing this like big old piece with this Grim Reaper hand like hanging out. And that fool did a year right out of high school, went God, to prison for man, a year. A prison? Doing, yeah. For painting stuff? What are well, we doing? He might, have, he might not went to prison prison, but he did a year. Like, That's kept, fucked yeah. up. That's yeah. fucked up. It's funny because, you know, what's kind of crazy is like, you you know, you might be a, like kind of just a regular person. You just go to work and shit and you see a big slab of empty freeway panel. You see something and you, you don't think anything of it. And then if you paint... You see that shit, you like, oh. Yeah. Or if you skate, yeah. you know, you see something, you're like, oh, what? It's just a bench. It's like, oh, it's a bench. Yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a gap. Like, that's just some roses. It's yeah. like, oh, no, you don't understand. So it's like, it's yeah. it's also, just, I'm just kind of going sidebar because I'm high, but it's uh, it, it's just funny to, to see that you guys see like that, that side of the freeway. You're like, let's go. Yeah. Like, like, just free range. And he gets a year plus yeah, for that. That's he, crazy. Um, just for painting. But, I mean, it was just kind of like a very casual thing, I feel like, because you just grow up and everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't. Um, but, yeah. But it got real, now, obviously. Somebody I'm just goes... like, I ain't trying to get busted. I've done a few. Well, the culture pieces. has changed, right, too. So where it's like, you know. Like you were just painting on walls and it's, it's like you're getting in trouble for it. And now yeah. people are paying you to paint their walls. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. that's a full circle moment. Like, holy shit, dude! Like, we, I, I know a guy that got locked up for doing what I'm doing, and now yeah. pe I'm literally paying my bills by yeah. doing this. It's like the same thing, just in a different way. To where well, those dude, the writers will argue that big time though. They don't, yeah. What do you mean? They don't like street artists. They're muralists. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say locally, but I would say like. Um, more like like the gang mentality they just don't like muralists they think they're like kind of weak <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, but like, but do they tag your shit wild um not really i think I, i've yeah. had a lot of love out here if they've tagged it i would know who it was i feel like i feel like there's that's kind of maybe part of it where it's like they don't like it because it like eats up some wall space where they normally would be tagging some shit. And it's like, now now I can't tag that because it's your shit, you know? I don't know. I just watch a lot of stuff online where, like, graffiti pages will show murals and all the, the writers are like, that's garbage, you know? They hate it. They, And I'm like, but I, I'm so... I'm, I'm okay with people having different opinions of course. and hating and mm -hmm. stuff. It's the only um, way to scale something is yeah, you gotta like, be okay. It's okay with me, you know. Um, we all like different stuff. I, I mean, take it personally. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I mean, and people can can learn a lot too to see because a lot of it is also like you know this is what a business wants on their on their wall. You know what I mean? So it's like there's a way. Not saying that anybody that that tags or does graffiti wants to go into being a muralist, but it's like, hey, this is oh, yeah. this is a lane though for like if you want to, you know, Bro, you could. If you're trying to fill my pockets. What's cracking? You know what I mean? Like you're trying to pay me to do use my talent. Yeah, I'm all about that. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm sure, man. That's gotta be. That. That. Like you I'm trying to work cracking. hard. You know, I got a little bit of what's it called when you um, imposter syndrome? Okay. Yeah, me too. 
so I heard somebody say something about work ethic. They're like, someone who I can't respect, no man who don't have a good work ethic. And I'm like, I feel that, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to work, right? But then I just did all this stuff, and I had a few days off, and so I started really getting in my head, like, man, I, this is stupid. Like, what am I? I'm not even an artist. I started really just gaslighting my head. That's like, wild. And I had that for a few days, but once I had um, realized that, I was like, oh, I'm just tripping. I got to ride this out. <laughs> you know, I got yeah. paintings to do. And this, yeah, is yeah. Yeah. this was recent. This was like last week. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. So Whoa. even after painting 10 years, been painting 10 years, there it's still a roller you're coaster. You're bona fide. Yeah. Like, you're right. bona fide, in the, especially in the city, bona fide. Like, anything that you see, it's like re- like you've left your stamp on the city. I actually wanted to, bring, I wanted to bring that up, too. When did you do the rabbit? Going up Ash, where the road turns like that. Mm. There's a rabbit right there. Yeah. Within the last six months, I was like, that, that was, is his. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was tight. That was during the pandemic. They had did like um, there was a big tag on there that said snot. Do you remember? It yes, was kinda I dope. do remember that. Yes. Snot. That's yes. Right. Yes. It was it dope. Was, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fat. And I think yeah. the fool don't like me because I had, went over it. But so the story <laughs> is that's not a city wall. That's oh, really? A, that's the, a, uh, the old lady that lives in that place. Oh, cool. So she reached out to me, and she's like, we got this tag on this thing. The city's threatening to find me like $1,000 a week if I don't paint over it. It's a little, little grandma, yeah. you know? And she's like, can you do something? And I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. You know, if you pay for help with supplies or something, I'll get something going. And um, yeah, sure enough, I was just out there. One, I came up with. <laughs> I it. love that rabbit. The person across the street called the cops, so the cops came. They're like, <laughs> and I even had an orange vest on. And I'm ro- all my pain. I'm rolling this wall out, and I have spray paint. In the middle cops, of the day, I'm like, like, I'm supposed to be here. Like the told him, and he was cool. But um, yep, got that one up. God really damn. Cool. And then there's another one I noticed too, and it was that green bluff. It was at the Siemens Siemens Farm. Yeah, the Siemens Farm. Yeah, yeah. And that was a sick one. I'm sitting here admiring the art, eating like a and caramel apple or something. Mm. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh shit, God yeah. did this. No wonder yeah, so no. sick. Is he like balled out a whole farm scene? Yeah, it was I got so it. really it was so yeah, tight. There, gonna be going back up there this year it, too. Yeah. I mean, that, oh, you that, are. Yeah. I just repeat customers, man. Yeah. The, the value is crazy. I mean, like <laughs> when you do those, those are the type of ones they pay you for because they you're like giving them what they want, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, those. I mean, the it, it just ties that whole area together. Yeah. So. Thank you very much, yeah, bro. That right. fucking the Thank whale you. on the water tower. That's that mm. one. That one's wild, dude. Damn, where is that? That's in Airway Heights. Oh, that's sick. I know, dude. How long that sh- how how long that take you? I think I painted that whole water tower in um, probably a few days. the The backside mm-hmm. is the parting of the Red Sea, what so it's f- like a little Noah, probably about this big, like with the st- in it, the staff and the seas just. Holy shit! But you can't see the other side. But now is this like so? <laughs> you said wait, hold on. You said you I swear it's on the other day. side. Yeah. And so was this something How? that, did they have the idea or were they just we, like, we need this painted and you came up with that idea or? That's the, you know, the teen challenge program I went through, you hear yeah, me talking yeah. about them. Mm-hmm. They're amazing. And I still have a pretty strong relationship with them. Um, the staff and I'll go out there and visit, but they pretty much, I don't want to say they let me paint anything, but if I say, Hey, can I paint that? They know. You know, I get down, and they're pretty open to ideas <laughs> yeah, and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> so they're like, oh, okay. Like, Dude, I love that. And what's funny is when I went in the program, I was smoked, bro. Like, I was out of my mind, and I was trying to convince them at that time, you guys got to let me paint stuff. Like, I it was wet. I, yeah, I don't know what I was talking about back then, but um, like, what do you mean? Like you, you're saying I was like, just like, I want to paint that wall right there. I'm an artist. You like, just wanna, just yeah, about, you're just throwing it yeah, out I'm there. Like, I'm trying to get down. I can do this. I mean, I believe in myself. How how'd you do that? Like, how'd you how'd you how do you do those like 
those shapes in the middle, but if the you pixelation. squint, it actually makes the face. That one, I wasn't sure, though, because usually... Like, squint, and it makes his face. Like, I don't understand that. Like, how do <laughs> You're you, right. You, you'll see... I've seen photos of that where it's, like, little photos mm-hmm. grouped together. It's like, it's a collage, right? Isn't that what the name, I guess, of the that is? But, like, that was... That's so crazy that you can do that. Like, that is... I don't even know what to say. I guess my question is, is, like, how did you learn that? Um... Is it a true magician never reveals his... Oh, his, 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 okay. Is that what it is? Yeah. It is. It is. A, I don't... Dude, I don't... Yeah. Never I'm reveal not, your I'm tricks. I'm not going to talk about that one. No, I mean, that was a really unique idea. And so all, like... I could just give it all away. You want me to give it all away? No, 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 yeah. no, no. Don't. No, I don't the want mystery? you to give it You want me to give away the... No, I don't. Yeah. But I know... <laughs> that's, that's why we're here. Well, yeah, I mean, well, dude, it's just art, and there's simple tricks to everything, you know what I mean? Um, I think the big thing is like, did did you have the idea that like before you put in any brush to like, did you know I'm a this yes. is what I'm gonna do with the pixelated face? You had it on a smaller. Yep, I did a drawing. I see. So I had a the remember the books I was telling you about. Yeah. There we so go. I had a little book. These ones were a little bigger. I had leveled up at the time. Okay. And a little bit bigger sketchbooks, and I did the drawing. You can still look at my feed, and it's up. And all I put. Put no information about the drawing. All I put was American Jesus, right? And in the comments, people were commenting, amazing, love it, yes, offensive. Like, they all got it. But it was like the... They knew it. They just saw it and kind of got it. And then months later, I was uh, offered the wall, and I painted it, and it was like, what does it mean? Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, it could be anything. You're like, Tell I put- me. I'm like, bro, you guys got it when I, <laughs> yeah, did the when I posted it. <laughs> you guys understood it then. That is just. That's like, but just it's crazy. big now. Yeah, it's got to be more. That had to have been it's a in my huge, face. Like, that was a scale <laughs> moment, right? That one was a little tricky because usually when they're more ground level, I, I can do a sketch, mm-hmm. get down the ground, and step back. And just kind of look at it. And I think I did that to an extent. But what I did was just, I kind of eyeballed it. I put a big, huge square with tape in the middle. Mm. And then I measured it. I think each square was a foot. So I put down that the, the square before I did the out outside. Mm-hmm. So I knew from the original picture it was like 13 by 13 or something. And then I just was able to just kind of freestyle the out the remainder of it yeah. to fit around those squares. Oh. Wow. And I was oh, cool. And I was a little freaked out when I did it too though. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna do the squares first. Yeah. That way I can finish up and get out of here. <laughs> because I don't know how people are gonna react when I do they this. They won't know what it is with the squares. Yeah, like I was like, oh, I'm my. gonna do if I finish this first and they had no idea what I was doing, you know, a few people did stop by. And they were wondering, um, it's a, taped off and rolled on type of thing. Uh, to spray get paint. That, oh, okay, but taped off and spray painted, In, like to yeah. get that tight edge. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so so really, what was the controversy? Did you get some contra- some some? Because it's Jesus with his face covered. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know that there's a lot of people. <laughs> but his that face could... isn't covered though. I mean, that's the big question. <laughs> okay, that's what's the... happened because I've never told anybody what it meant to this day. So His that I, that there. was the big question that co- that got so much attention was I never told anybody what it originally meant. I mean, because really, it's just what it means to you. Because really, art is just Have like this s- is like what you interpret it as, yeah. and that's where like when I see it. Then I, I see something that it I'm gonna just give you my personal interpretation when I look at it. I look at it and I think like, you know, this is like what what do you, you know, what do you see Jesus as? What do you see like this whole mm. thing, creation, life? Like what do you, it's like open to your own interpretation to to go from there, right? Rather than putting a defining picture, it gives you the interpretation to mm-hmm. say, like, what you know. But in the in the vein of life and existence and humanity and all that kind of stuff. Damn, I love that. Thanks. For, that, thanks yeah, for I that. That's. I love that. I mean, no, I love hearing people. Yeah. Go it on. popped up, man. It popped up on all of us. That's kind of what happened. It's just like you know, that's kind of what's cool about this art, right? It's like, 
you know, anybody can just like put some on Instagram, like, oh, I draw this, put it on Instagram, it's cool, right? But this is like, this all popped up on us, right? <laughs> yeah, this all just came, now. like, you we're like, oh, shit. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is like, man, and I remember... Uh, me and my lady, we were trying to find it. We we're like, you know, we we when we had you on the podcast, I think the first time we were, Didn't even we, know we, where it was. we had a fun what? game where we were like, we want to find as many Godfidi pieces as possible and just like make a whole day trip of just cruising around finding different pieces. And yeah, man, this really has uh, become just a, a huge. Cool. All of these, honestly, have you've done? This is an astronaut. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh fuck! Look at the shadow. That's sick. Do you know how many you've done in Spokane, <laughs> roughly? I would say like 50, Damn. I want to say. Damn, I thought it would T- be Some running. tucked away, some outdoors. Um, but you think that's a lot. Even to do 10 a year. Yeah, that's five years. Well, some, well it seemed like when I was just starting, I mean, there's got to be more than that. But it's it like be- when I was just starting, I would do three. Three a month or something. Fast. I was gonna Wait, say because I just did three. <laughs> I just did three a month this last month, you know. So sometimes oh, I can kind of knock them out. It's just it's such a long drawn out process. Talking designs, getting approval, talking possibly money or um, funds um, to help support the to get it painted. There's just so much stuff. Usually I have yeah, to sick. jump. Oops, What's like the balance between? Um, you know, your love to paint and then like your need to, you know, support yourself and make money and like how you balance that. Bro, I'm 100% okay with it. Like, I know there's some artists that feel maybe possibly they've sold out or something if they're making money. Have you heard that? Like people are just real sensitive about it. You know, they don't want their art to be like, um, maybe they have a hard time using their skill to create something for somebody else yeah mm. maybe it's only good at create like really tapped into creating something for like that they want to yeah create yeah and um i don't necessarily teach their own but i don't necessarily transcribe to that um if some uh plug if any business owners want to pay me their hard-earned money <laughs> to you know what i'm saying to like create their vision yeah uh, let's talk about it what you need i got you we'll work through this like let's oh, make I see it what happen you're saying. it's like a cop-out like to to like say hey i want this and that's not mm-hmm. art type of thing but it's I like see. a tattoo artist yeah exactly like a tattoo artist I like doesn't just say like yeah come in i'll just you know whatever <laughs> i'm feeling today <laughs> you go get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah that's kind of my mentality but i do know artists that won't do that yeah and maybe they're more of a canvas type of painter or a specialized type of art. I see. And they won't bend. And, like, bro, if that's their thing. But, um, you know, uh, I've... This was only my first year getting my paintings out there into the world this last year. Like, I, I've done paintings for a while. I did have a solo show in 2020. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, had the solo show. Um and I've been sharing my paintings, but this last year, you see all the shows I had that I got, got to be part of. I yeah. was like, "Wow, dude! It was really, it really opened my eyes," because when you're in like a smaller city like this, kind of the one of like the top dogs in something, then you go to a bigger city, and everybody's the top dog. Everybody's got talent. Everyone can hit this a mural. This is different. This yeah. now I'm now I'm really getting a bigger view of like what that's like. And then when I first started um this last year started following more people, it seemed like you know, everybody's winning right now. Right? What the I need to win, you know, and it's good to have that uh that fire under you. Yeah, a little competition. Well, healthy little healthy competition is yeah. great. Like, yeah. Bro, even frenemies, like, bro, like, you know, you got that one person that's always just hating and stuff, but you're like, all right, I'm going to show you what's up right now. Like, it, all of its motivation. It's all, as long as you interpret it that way to create that yeah, motivation. Turn it positive. Turn that's it a into superpower because not everybody does that. A lot of people look at it and they, like, they get demotivated by it. Mm-hmm. But it's like you either use it as fuel or mm-hmm. it's slowing you down. You now know? I think I've I've been in a good headspace where haters will come bro and it just falls right off it just rolls right off me like so quick because i i just feel like it's coming so 
often mm-hmm. that it has to. I just have to brush over it. Well, I'm gonna be I honest. Spend too it's much it's time. honestly kind of refreshing sometimes in a weird way when you get shade thrown your way and you recognize it as shade and you're yeah. just like, oh, that's what it is. And then in in when it's shocking to me, my reaction is, damn, you too. Mm-hmm. I like I thought you I thought you were different mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. but no you're just like like everybody's throwing shade that's okay I mean I know? see it as like it's the game I see it as like you're Bro. when you're in your it's the game when you're like moving in your purpose yeah mm-hmm. like you're in like you call it your zone or like but like you're like in you're like you went you got out of what you were when you first got here mm-hmm. you you've worked your way through those bugs now you're just now you're just moving yeah. so that's the reason why when that stuff happens to you it's like <laughs> bro like i don't need you yeah. like i'm doing like i'm so in my purpose i'm mm-hmm. so where i need to be that like and you're so certain of that mm-hmm. that this doesn't matter yeah and that that is that could be like no matter who you are if you're you kind of feel it. It feels right. It kind of feels aligned. Like yeah. you're moving and you're you're just like feeling good about what you're doing, you know, mm-hmm. and the work's just coming and you're just doing great work and creating relationships mm-hmm. and just and things are just that's when, yeah, when the haters come, it's just like it's almost just like, let's go. Yeah. Come on. I love it. Yeah. I, I remember uh, I love it. <laughs> remember like getting feed me. Yeah. Remember when you were young and you'd get like knocked off? Where like you'd be doing really good for e- maybe a year, and like things would happen, and it would like knock you off. I feel like in art or in like a situation where like you know your value to like a real fine tune, you get to a point where like you're like I can't be like knocked I off. I can't be knocked no, off. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like after ten years, it's like there's no going back. Yeah, like there's no one no... can say anything. Well, really, it's the inst- they could say they hate a mural, it's and you're the... like, that's okay. So yeah. what it is back when you were younger, what it is is it's the installation of doubt. So they can install yes. mm-hmm. in you some of that imposter syndrome. When people are hating on you, that's what they want to do is they want to install the, the thing that would yeah. make them satisfied is to know that you're second guessing yourself now mm-hmm. yeah. because of their comment or because of their thing. Now you're like, well, am I good? Like, and, and to know that you're dwelling on it and thinking about it and fucked up about it, you know, yeah. that's what they want. That's what they would be satisfied to know that One you're thing, fucked though, up about. I it. do is yeah. I'm the type where I'll consider it. <laughs> That's what I was no, just you got because the haters, as petty as they are, they're so good at picking at the like, our weak spot, yes. our littlest, smallest weak spots. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I might not agree <laughs> with it, but give me a few weeks, and I'll probably be like, all right, man, they was right. Well, yeah. separating yourself, I, you think, know, I feel like, like from yeah, your shit, because so you're funny. right. Like, is this constructive criticism or is this hate? It yeah. could be hate, but yeah. it still could but be But it still is good hate. Maybe like, I need to work on this as petty as it is oh, and rebuild line, some kind of barrier right here so that this doesn't happen again. So that's a yeah. fine line, because if you start looking at every hater as like, yeah. something i need to some action i need to take then mm-hmm. it's like it can be then you start really valuing the haters <laughs> they, all of a sudden now it starts to have a way well, but see, them, but, but see the, the thing about you. like what you're saying i i so intimately understand what you what you just said and what like so when you you'll, you'll be like oh shit like what he's saying is kind of true it's kind of a fun thing when you know you can't like that. What they're saying is like constructive criticism to be like, oh, like, yeah, oh, that B on that was fucked up. You yeah. could have improved that B. Yeah. It's funny to go back and be like, that B, I could have made that B a little better. Yeah, you know no, what yeah. I mean? But the way but you went about telling me was yeah. disrespectful. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah. but at the end of the day, you do overcome it. But it's funny because I do hear all that too. And it's, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good and healthy. And, and and I just overcome it. The yeah, thing is, it, yeah. I don't sit on it forever, but it works. Yep. They're good at hating. I was gonna mm-hmm. say, do you feel the same? <laughs> do you get some of that too, like with your business? Oh and- God, tons of it. Especially, I'm starting to get people like kind of being like, what? You know, they they think I'm talking about something I don't know. When really, I'm talking about stuff that I've been through. You know, mm-hmm. like if I say anything about business or anything like that, and it's like, yeah, you might be right. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. know it's worked for me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whoops. You know, so it's just you just got to kind of take it off of the back. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. stop doing it. Yep. So, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Too much. Too invested. Yeah. 
And, you know, life is life can be boring not yeah. taking risks and, you know, talking right outside of your uh-huh. you're trying to do right outside of your, you know, insert whatever you do. You know, I'm always trying to push the envelope. I don't know about you guys. No, 100 percent. 100 percent. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like greatness comes from like that lack of doubt, like when you're really moving in your purpose and you understand like, yo, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm where I'm at. Like, I know where I've been. I know where I'm going. Mm-hmm. I feel good about where what I'm doing right now. So then yeah. it, you, you kind of have this invincibility shield that's like, well, I, I see what you're doing. That's OK. You know, yeah. you can't. Yeah. You, I, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing just because you said mm-hmm. that. If that's yeah. what you thought I was going to do. Yeah. You know, so that's cool, man. It, it, we. We gotta you gotta endure a lot when you're when you're creating art at all or have a business and you're putting it out there and you're trying to you know the best you can do is really just you know do really great work and and uh, you know the haters are necessary mm-hmm. definitely. What's your uh, what would you say like your your the favorite piece that you've done that that you've either like got to to come up with something to do yourself or something that you were you know, commission to do what murals or paintings or all the above. Just, yeah, just, well, let's say murals. Yeah. Um, just something that you had a lot of fun doing, man. They're all different. I feel like, I, um, um, I think especially this past year, I've had, uh, a lot of opportunity to do large portrait work mm-hmm. with the faces. Okay. So that's been, uh, that's been pretty cool for me. Um, Oh, so yeah. what are what are the some? I'm of the trying ones? to move out of the mural world. Are you, you guys? Yeah, Why? I'm trying to make it into the the gallery art. Fine world. art. Yeah, uh, I mean you do beautiful. So oil paintings, I will dude. paint murals, and I love it. It gets me out into the public. It gets me in front of people. Otherwise, being in the studio is like it's my spare room, isolating. I love it. I get to share. Um, like I've been sharing little clips mm-hmm. with yep. me talking about my skill set and what I'm doing. Um, and it can be a lot to be stuck in that room for a month, a couple months, you know, even a week by yourself in a room. Mm-hmm. It's just not good headspace. And so the murals pull me out of that. And it's it's a different kind of accomplishment. Um, when I do a, when I have a painting that I know is a winner. I know it before it's even finished. I'm like, this right here, this is a hit. Mm-hmm. This is a hit right here. When I do a mural, um, you sound like a rapper or something. Like, like I just you know, know. Cause it's almost that same thing. Like you're like, oh. yeah, I try to make hits, like really focus on trying to make, and I do with my paintings because so, some of them are more personal. I'm able to be a little more edgy. Um, I've got a pretty good rhythm, pretty good algorithm, mm. of my, you know, of yeah, like your what, al- yeah. yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a, a cool world. Um, I'm finding more and more people are interested in my paintings, and because I came from the mural painting world first, people didn't understand when I started to do paintings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they were like, we want show us a mural, like I we. See. And then I started doing the paintings and being consistent with it. And now I'm hoping to move into the painting world. And I'll, a few paintings will uh, shuffle shuffle out, you know, occasionally somebody will buy something, mm-hmm. um, which is nice because it's a nice little chunk of change. Um, I don't paint each painting to sell. I will say, like, while I'm working on it, thinking it's going to sell, I've done some of them. Like, like you see the um, the painting with the guy who had, like, committed suicide. Did you see that one? OD? The, uh, no, he had, like, shot himself in the head. No. I'm trying to, I think I have seen Edge. it, but I'm trying yeah, to like, think of the one. I mean, the one that stands out is the. I don't think it's. That one with the mom, I think it was, holding. He's the, on a couch holding a gun, and, and like, a, he's holding a little piece of, um, paper it's called the last poet yeah i was gonna say so can you pull this I've one up done Brian. so Some real quick on edgy. the real quick on the mural thing do you yeah. think maybe you're getting away from murals because in a way you don't own it because it's a wall that everyone just gets to walk up and witness and therefore 
the value is like everyone gets to enjoy it and they look at it and they say, wow, this is art and that guy did it and he's cool. But in a way, it like it just is it's it's going to like it as 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 opposed to a canvas where like the value of it is in the eyes of someone who wants to like obtain it. You know what I mean? Like, do you price? Do you price your paintings like based off of like like how do you even come up with that? Are you? Do you Over think you're time. low or high or what do you think? I don't even know what your paintings flu- go for. It fluctuates. Man. Are you comfortable talking about what you've sold stuff for? Yeah. Um. So I'm. I mean, so this is the art market, mm-hmm. right? I'm bringing my product to the market. That guy. I want to sell it if possible. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't do me any good to hold on to artwork. No, and um, and this is a wow. t- this is a tricky subject because, you know, I know the value of a painting with my skill set, mm-hmm. but I don't want to price myself out of the market to where somebody can't even buy it. Yeah, it's that's just ridiculous. I do want people to buy certain paintings, but um, I do stuff that maybe might not get sold. I don't put a price down if someone see something they're more than welcome to reach out to me be like how much is that i've had a lot of people buy stuff um oh so directly through you know i see i see so it's not like you have a painting and you say if you would like it it's this price they have they inquire and say is this for sale if they want yeah um Ah. i've get people that um reach out and i have like a pdf with available works and i'll email them that pdf with all with prices and sizes and stuff but I don't create something thinking somebody's gonna buy it, and I'm always surprised when somebody does. They're like, "Dude, how much is that? I need that." And I can tell they're hit paintings, but a lot of the times I think people might be not ready for my pricing because it is a little expensive. But bro, I'm trying to move product. Yeah. Like if you want to talk to me about, I got some wiggle room in my prices. We yeah. could work out a payment plan. Yeah. Like what you need, <laughs> yeah. how much can you afford? Mm-hmm. Is it something I can work with? Yeah. Like. So sure. what uh, is this? Is did this painting sell? No, I still have that painting. And what has s- sold? Um, I'm just curious. Go back, B. And well, that, that one is that like, one. Is- no, so that one when I someone had asked about it when I first painted it, and I was like sixteen thousand, right? And since then, it's uh, escalated in popularity, right? Since I first painted it, it's been at, shown at the Tacoma Art Museum. Um, I was at my solo show. It seems a few times a year that painting will catch a wave, mm-hmm. uh, and it'll just grow even more popular. It's like some certain person will share it or something. Is it more than a year old? It's two years old. Two years old. Because you actually got the model and everything like over at the house on the couch and like mm-hmm. kind of created the scene, like you painted from the scene, right? Mm-hmm. And so that painting is still for sale, 16 wow. grand? Or? Now it's 40. See? Yeah, 40K. Like. Okay, so that, that I, now I see why you're getting away from murals because yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. no, I mean like yeah. a businessman, right? Yeah, like, like, I mean, you know, like your, your, your skill set is what it is. And like your popularity is like, you got to be able to, you know. Well, some, and this is more something that you, this, you get to, to paint what you want to paint. My vision. Yes. Your vision probably has the most value, doesn't it? Well, it's. More, pr- it's a collective of like my life and my experiences, and you get to see the world through my eyes, mm-hmm. you know. And um, not only that, but I put it's my life's work, it's not just a hobby. This is something that when I'm gone, I hope will outlive me through my work. Oh, yeah, it will. And it will. if it goes in the right place, people. You know, the light will probably turn on and they'll be like, oh, I see what he was doing. Like they do all great artists, mm-hmm. you know, like, yep. like he wasn't just painting this just because like he was trying to show the world something. Um, and this painting has nothing to do with poetry or even like the subject matter. Mm-hmm. It actually had to do with a lot of the like shallowness of society. And if you read the sort the poem, it was about a poet that had like put everything into his work and he was trying to share it with people, but nobody cared, you know? Um, and so it's like the idea that this was the last poet, the last poem 
where would we be in society? You know, um, what if wow. I was the last artist, you know, and I died? What would that mean to the world? So that's kind of was the idea wow. behind that as opposed to a po the subject or a poem. You know, it's like, uh, is nothing sacred type of thing. And you have this kind of thought in your head, like as you're creating this painting and that's, or is it like after you paint it, you kind of have that or beforehand? Definitely. Beforehand. It's before it's ever an that's image. That driving. It's an idea. Yeah. Wow. So if I feel extremely moved to paint something, I just do it. Now I trust myself. Now I'm just like, I have this wild hair, this idea to do something. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to worry if it's going to be my biggest painting, but only after this long period of time, they are hits. Bro. <laughs> like, they are good paintings. Well, they are yeah. very focused. And this is, this is like, genre. this is you and your purpose, too. Like, in that same thing, like, when you're moving and you're, like, in your in the pocket man where you should be like you know i understand now what we're talking about the murals and the paintings and the murals is is something that has limitations mm -hmm. it has, yeah. you know compared to the painting mm -hmm. compared to the painting but i mean it's like the mural it has its value and all that stuff totally. but, that's but value. Totally. compared to the painting but, i see it and man. you're not even talking about monetary value you're talking no. about like passion value yeah. like you yeah. being and, able to just like yeah. this that's like you said that's where the real value is sure someone can pay you to do something really dope mm -hmm. awesome i'll right? put it my everything into it but too, this you right know? and you'll yeah um, it's not compromised with the no, with the I'm, skill uh -uh. but but to be able to like tap right out of your mind that's what that real art right if you look at any of the real artists that have ever been through time that we've admired their work it's like you know it really leaves room for that interpretation so did was you were you kind of limitless on the the pixelated jesus face was that did that come straight from you did you have did you feel like you had limitations when you made that did you know yeah, that was a drawing and honestly it's not the most edgiest thing you ever seen in your life right no it's like Okay, whatever. But at the time, um, think, you know, what, five years ago, Spokane, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem that long, but Spokane's... Oh, it's fitting. 2018, it's kind of, right? Um, I did the drawing, and I still felt a little, like, sacrilegious about it. Like, is this a bad thing? Mm -hmm. You know, like, is this... I didn't, was unsure about it, but I did the drawing. I was like, I'm just going to put it out there. It's not the, it seems so simple. And a lot of my biggest ideas all feel so simple that I doubt it even more. You know, like there's not enough lights, camera, action. There's not enough show, but it's such a simple thought that it's so easy to get. And it get but it like, also gives so many people. Like it got those gears turning that all those questions. Mm -hmm. What is this? It, it really gave room for just a regular person to, you know, I'm I'm offended by that or whoa, that really made me think. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like that's cool. Like because yeah, it doesn't crazy. need to be so, but I mean this too. This is the same thing. Like you're saying, like I could come to my own conclusion of what I think this is, and then to hear what you say, like mm -hmm. what was the driving idea when you created this it's like holy shit and anybody can look at this and draw their own yeah. and when i did that like i tread very lightly on that subject matter people have dealt with some serious stuff that's mm -hmm. not something i'm just like playing with i yeah. knew i was thinking in my head possibly some i get my account taken away when i paint this you know like it's a racy image i could get flagged Fuck whatever right. i don't know and i just was like i'm just gonna put it out there and it went, it blew, that painting blew up. Did it? Dude, I, Holy I got so overwhelmed with like, there's like 500 comments. I got so overwhelmed. I couldn't even answer it at that point. I was like, I can't even look at everything, you know. That's awesome. It was so much for me that it just gave me anxiety. But I did eventually look at it, and I appreciated it, um, all the comments. But it evokes so much in people that it touched on that, that, subject matter you know um one thing that kind of stood out to me was like the the chicano machismo to be like down you know there's like this manly thing you just don't want to be the weakest link and men deal with stuff man mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean this was a t that's why the is the painting i think struck a lot of people 
is like, a, man, we deal with some hard stuff, man, and we just keep it to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, um, we just hold it, work it out, you know. I think that I get a lot of pride when I do that. It might be in a dark place, and I just work through it my best and almost, like, father myself with, like, my own advice. You know what I mean? Like, this is what you got to do. Just let it unfold. And, and then I feel really good that I made it through that. Mm-hmm. moment you wow. know it happens a lot i feel mm-hmm. like but as men that's how we do things you know um and so yeah just that painting it, it struck a lot of chords with a lot of people and i don't know that when i'm working on it and i'm about to put it out there i have no idea what's gonna happen mm-hmm. I, th- I thought it was gonna be a failure and it's just got so many people um talking and uh, and when it comes to something like that, I think as an artist, you do have to pull stunts every once in a while. You do got to kind of shake the, you know, shake the tree up. Just remind people like, yo, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm going to be a little crazy right now just to wake you guys up. And then- but I mean, that's what art is. Art mm-hmm. is to wake people up. It is to mm-hmm. shake things up, right? Because it isn't. That's exactly right. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like watching a movie versus reading a book. You know what I'm saying? When you're reading a book, you're reading the words, you're creating, you're using your imagination to interpret the story and create this thing. When you're watching a movie, you're just watching something that's that's Been all created for it's you. Just right there, you're just watching it. This is it's it all the 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 art really gets you to it brings people together and it, it's like you were saying, it's something the society needs. Like if you're saying like, hey, if I was the last artist and I was gone, what would that mean for society? You know, well, the big thing is that it, it would be a devastation to society to not have art and to not have artists. Mm-hmm. And what you've done in Spokane with the murals has just uplifted and made this place like way cooler to live in even just visually and and it gives a it gives a whole like um it just gives a cool vibe to the whole city to see real uh not someone who tried to paint a mural you know what i'm saying something like it's just so good and so that's you know i'm just i'm just proud of you and your story and i'm proud uh you know that you're like to call you just that you're in spokane man like you know know. it's a dope little city i was thinking about that the other day i was like man it's a tight city you know to be living in have you done stuff in like seattle or moved over to that that bigger i was gonna bring that up too like could you see yourself getting the call to like do those big city type murals or have you done it or um i've done some out of out of state work honestly i'm t- i'm just trying to do my painting thing yeah. um i did have some so uh group show out there in belltown mm-hmm. seattle area last year and then a show in tacoma but to be honest when i go to seattle i'm like see all those murals it's not new like mm-hmm. when i i'm not coming bring in that new you get what i'm saying like yeah. to yeah. seattle like they've got it's almost They're like you are with. where you're needed. Like you're, yeah. you were needed here. Yeah. So let me ask you this in terms of like um, doing murals as opposed to the art, uh, like on canvas. Um, would you, in the future, let's say that you really slowed down on murals, would you pick it back up if people were like, "Yeah, you can treat, you can do whatever you want Keep in going. that space." You know what I mean? You can create whatever. Oh yeah, I always paint a mural. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it, but you'll get you're getting you want to get away from it because you uh, feel like you have more control over the canvas. Is that what I'm understanding? Or the money feels a little bit easier because yeah. like I can paint a canvas and someone will, out of the blue will want. But when it yep. comes to the mural stuff, it's a lot of behind the scenes work. Yeah. So which is um, back and forth with a client, mm-hmm. possibly a lot of time wasted. Um, which is okay. That's part of a business. I see. You put your time into it. You mm-hmm. know, if you want something to flourish, you put your time into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of caps you from the jump because, like, they're mm-hmm. like, you're like, here's the price. And then they either agree or disagree. But if they agree, then there may be a whole bunch of talking 
before you ever put paint in mm-hmm. a wall and you know that this is only worth that much no matter yeah. how much talking we do mm-hmm. and i could i could see that i could see that whereas the- whereas like when you have a canvas like it's almost like stock that like can rise you know what I mean? It's not going to fall as long as I continue to make art and be yeah. creative. And on these, can- on when I'm doing a canvas and uh, on with oil painting, I am able to, it's my art. I can do whatever I want on it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, like, I could see how that would be. I could see they how. They both have their pluses, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I'm just thinking, like, more of a, from a business standpoint, like, how someone, it, the bigger thing that people see, I could see. Uh, someone getting tricked into thinking that has more value. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, but it's, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> well, both of them are great as far as like business and making a living. Um, but like yeah. physically, dude, painting murals, it's, it's a job. There we yeah. go. So if, I'm not even thinking by that. By the time I'm 50, <laughs> yeah. how much mural do I have in me? Maybe a lot. But, um, I think all the time that I put into talking to clients, designs, um, scheduling back and forth, uh, to actually getting up to painting the murals, um, isn't like, it's okay. Yeah. But when I can just do a painting in my studio and sell it, it's, it's really nice and convenient. I just thought of I just thought of like a structure that I could see working, but this is coming from someone who does not paint. But if you were getting phone calls and requests and desire from people in like areas where you wanted to see and visit and be, and in the process you set up viewings for you know, you could like be there with your art. You know what I mean? And there's like a draw for you. But then also the bread and butter would be there and there's a mural to do there. And it's in Tampa or it's in Tampa. But, you know, it's somewhere in the up the part of the country that you would like to go visit. Mm-hmm. I could see this being like one of those things where it's like it ticks a few boxes and it's like, boom, let's go do a mural. Because <laughs> I've never been to New York. And, you know what I mean? And, and this is a paid gig, so it's going to be kind of this. Or, but then also I get to bring my art and this gallery is going to let me set up. I could see it kind of, I could see a lane for it all, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty neat. That Do you want to travel? Yeah, would you? Have do? you been to a lot of places? Just, I no, just barely went to Calif- back to California this last year. Tell us about it. You know, yeah, that was cool. That. Yeah, that was because uh, last time we talked to you, you were you like, hadn't been, you right? hadn't been back. Been, no, the memory was even in the little video. Mm-hmm. He was like, "No, I haven't been to California." Um, it was cool. I got stopped by my old neighborhood. So, so tell us why there. you went back. Like, were you were you was it just time to go back? Did 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 something? It was my art took me. Really, I, I always knew. My, dude. I always knew my art would bring me back to California. I just didn't know how, but it was a uh, uh, the art show in Palm Springs. Mm. And so, how did that? Did you they reach out, or did you you connect? I, w- I was um, invited to a group show. Wow, the Perez Bros. Wow, that's cool, man. Yeah. So, were you, how did you feel about it? Did you feel like before going? Were you nervous? Did you? I was excited, man. I was waiting for my reason to get down there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, I stopped by. Because Palm Springs is like Los An- lower Los Angeles area. Okay. Got stopped back by my old neighborhood. And we it was saw weird that. to drive up into the, like, onto the avenue, you know? The, it's, everything seems so small. It was like the whole world to me my whole life. And then I drove up. And then uh, we went down to my old house. And when my grandma passed away, I never got to go see the house like i was literally staying in a trap house up the block with my mom doing dope but i just couldn't look at the house i could not walk by that house so i never went down to that that um that block the whole time i was there before i moved up here uh my aunt ended up staying there but when we went for the visit we pulled up because it's all boarded up now and the weeds are all grown in the front and I knew it was abandoned. No one occupies it right now? No. That, so there's the front house, the middle house, and the back house mm-hmm. on Ramona, right? Okay. The front house is my grandma's house. The two back houses, people live there. But the front house, it was just kind of was 
I knew nobody lived there, but and I thought it was gonna be, I don't know, more heavy or something to go visit, but it wasn't. And I went and checked it out, and it seemed small. It just seemed so small. But I went in the backyard, and my grandma used to have this gazebo. You know, you go sit under it mm-hmm. and the little path and all the rocks wow. and the flowers, and it was just all gone. But there was this big bush growing off of the garage with these, like, kind of purple flowers. You know, it's me. It was like, all right. Like, I don't know. I just felt like I see you, Grandma. You yeah, know, like, those silver like something beautiful just left there after all the wreckage and everything. I was going to ask how you felt when you being back to a place that you hadn't been and so you know you have so many memories but you haven't seen it yeah well so right long. after that we went up to the little carniceria up there with and they've all where they have like the the, the mexican bread and they'll make burritos and the same people work in there stop and my sister she went in i was with my sister she went in to use the restroom i went out in front and i was just sitting there like i used to literally sit right there with that same phone, um, pay phone right there waiting for dope. And I was just sitting out there on the avenue, like, kind of rainy, like, today, a little gray and stuff, just sitting out there. I was like, yeah, this ain't for me. You know, it just felt like nothing changed in a way. And mm-hmm. I had 11, 12 years clean and sober, but I could just see myself, because I lived on this this avenue for 31 years, so everything very familiar you know when you just kind of even know the cracks in the, the street smells mm. and the, yeah well you got that different perspective now mm-hmm. and you have yeah. that like you you have so much life experience and knowledge now when you're looking at that same situation and looking at naive you young mm-hmm. sitting there like you said everything seems so big when you're young like everything seems so big your house your neighborhood every this is your whole world mm-hmm. and then when you touch outside and you realize how much is out there and then you get back there and you're like oh wow yeah you're you're really seeing all the things yeah, anybody recognize you at all no we just kind of drove through there but i saw yeah. this one fool on a bike i was like there's this fool man <laughs> 12 years <laughs> later bro the same homies no. doing the same stuff and I you, was like, you were like that's him it was haunting bro like to see the same fool on the same <laughs> beach cruiser crew you know what i'm saying wow. like Damn. 13 something years later 12 years later i was like Shh. and the crazy thing is my mom lives right i was telling my sister like what if we see mom because like she had always, she's lives on the avenue and you know she had has her struggles and stuff mm-hmm. and my sister don't get along with my mom mm-hmm. and i could probably talk to her but we're like because my mom lives on the same street that, oh, that we were on we drove by i told my mom because like it's been a very rocky relationship trying to maintain something healthy positive but the last conversation i was like yeah me and janie were down there she's like oh what she's like that makes me so happy like she's like you guys did something together because i was adopted by my grandma they were adopted my sisters and they came up here to um north bend that's how i'm up here oh okay because when my grandmother had passed away i came up to live with my oldest sister and I was using and stuff still at that time. But um, we, my youngest sister, who I went on the road trip, we've never done that before. And we're still talking after the road trip. So that nice. was good. Like, we're mature enough to know the, the, the relationship is special, mm-hmm. regardless of the little annoyance you know what i'm saying the little annoyances or no it's the things that you used to get hung up on when you were younger that it's like nothing now now you're grown you like look you got such a different world view yeah Yeah. remember what we used to get hung up on yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's all that used to be (laughs) because we had all these things that you thought you were supposed to be and all these things you thought you were supposed to do and you were really just trying to please external factors and really it's just Mm -hmm. like when you're like i said that's why i keep saying like when you're moving in your purpose when you're just being you to the fullest extent and like really embodying what you want Mm -hmm. and you've cultivated your own life now because you took yourself from a, you know, you didn't, you weren't like willingly 
put into this situation like you were you were basically like born into this kind of a situation like with with your family life and stuff like in the in the route that you ended up taking and then you had to do the healing like you had to do it like you had to seek the help and you had to to I mean there's a work ethic in that alone just to I mean you've like I'm not going to say you rehabilitated yourself because you had help it was a good lord bro God saved me, bro. I remember because I was in the program, the Teen Challenge, mm -hmm. for six months, okay? And I didn't have no family to call. I didn't have nobody to write. I didn't have no visits. I didn't have no letters coming in. And I'm wow. watching the fa other people's families getting restored right in front of my eyes. And I'm like, God, why isn't this happening to me? I don't, I can't call my mom. Can't call where she's on the streets. Like they try to protect you from bad yeah. people in bad situations because it's easy for someone in the early recovery stages to just leave. Mm -hmm. You know, oh screw this, I'm just getting high. So I was there six months, and I actually did leave, <laughs> right? And I went to the UGM in Yakima, the Spokane Teen Challenge. I was there for six months. I couldn't hang. I was like, I'm gonna leave. They dropped me off the bus stop. I went to the UGM in Yakima, and I was homeless for 40 days. In Yakima? Yep, staying at the UGM. Um, didn't use, wasn't, didn't start smoking again, um, staying clean and sober. Do you hear my Valentine's Day story? Mm. The it, So it was Valentine's Day in Yakima, and I'm holding a sign in front of the Walmart. You never heard this? Mm -mm. I'm holding a sign in front of the Walmart, and I have six, seven months clean and sober, I had I thought there was something still out there in the world for me, and it, and it's Valentine's Day. I'm holding this little sign, and I like look over, and then a car had pulled over here, and a little girl gets out, and she has a cupcake, and she's like, "Happy Valentine's Day," and gives it to me, and I looked at that cupcake, bro, and she hopped back in the car and left, and I like couldn't panhandle at that point, bro. It was just so shameful to me because like I have lost everything and i felt this little piece of love and i folded up my sign and i'm like wait till i got pretty far away and just tears are streaming down my face bro i'm like i can't do this again i gotta go back in the program right so and this was about 40 days after i had left and i come back in the program and and one of the guys he's like i was like why am i here and he's like god brought you back to save you and I'm like, I knew God brought me back into Spokane to save my life because I was like, I didn't have nowhere to go. I didn't have no family or nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought. And so I come back for another six months um, into the program. And then when I get out, I'm staying at a halfway house and I got just a little bit over a year clean and sober. And I was just washing dishes, like I was saying, drawing in the morning, you know, um, but I definitely feel like God had a bigger purpose for me then. Would you say that like God was like there kind of, you know, along the way as like you were washing dishes, even like a year in there, like to maintain my that. whole life, keeping me alive, bro. Like thinking about that so heavy all the times I overdose in bathrooms by myself. You know, like over I overdose in a bathroom, I overdose in a basement, try to you know, do myself that big harm, you know, like her take myself out. And I woke up five days later from that one. Holy shit. I overdosed. In the basement? Yeah. No one was, no one. No one knew I was down there. And, wow. And then uh, at 19, I had like, um, I, over, I was in juvenile drug court at 19. And I was working, at, I was actually working at a tattoo shop, and the probation couldn't come test me, so I was kind of ducking and dodging the, t the P test, but, like, passing them with this test pure stuff. I was chipping a little bit. Um, finally, they caught me on a weekend when I wasn't What's asking. chipping me? Just, like, using a little bit of okay. heroin here okay. and there just to kind of, like, mm -hmm. whatever. Stay just, up, whatever. Yeah, just, like, keeping it around, <laughs> you know, not ready to give it up. <laughs> yeah. And they finally catch me, and they, they were really hopeful for me, the drug court. Like, for some reason, they just, you know, they really were hopeful for my future. I was only 19, and I was probably the only one in the whole group that was really strung out. So they sent me to um, 
to Torrance to a house, and there's a group of guys that are all kind of clean and sober at this house, right? It's a clean and sober house. And I see this rich dude, and he's got, like, a suitcase, carries everywhere with him, and he's one of the guys there. He's, like, a lawyer or something. I'm like, what's, that, what's in that suitcase? <laughs> you, know, you know it's something. It's like some Pulp Fiction Who shit. carries a suitcase, like, yeah. for real? And finally, one day, he was gone, and I seen it peeking out from under the bed. I'm like, bingo. So I'm like, psh, pop that thing open, and there's just pills and China White, all these drugs. And I take a few bottles of methadone pills, right, like 100 count. I put them in a, in a bottle, and I'm popping them for a few days, <laughs> right? So I don't know if he noticed or anything, but a couple days later, um. I remember we went to a football game. I'm just popping them casually. Methadone's like a slow release type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I go to bed that evening, and then I wake up in the ICU at Harbor UCLA, and they had shot my heart with Narcan. So I had overdosed. They, they found me that morning. I wasn't breathing. There was no life in me. I was purple. I was cold. And they gave me that shot of Narcan. This was at 19 years old. Um, and I woke up for a second and they're doing a sonogram on my stomach like you know like checking my See insides if your organs are working and then i fell asleep again and i woke up in a room with like no windows and i was all tubed up had the um the oxygen on and we breathe at a hundred i think normally somewhere around there and i remember i took it off and i didn't know what was still what happened to this like i felt fell asleep so i didn't know what why all this was happening and I take the mask off and I look and I see the oxygen thing just go doo -doo 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 -doo, like go to like like rapidly Put going down. Back on. No, I fell asleep again. <laughs> oh, and because it passed you out. Yeah. yeah. And then I woke up in the ICU, which was like the top floor of Harbor UCLA. Yeah. And they have like the bubble in the middle and all the patients who are possibly going to die or whatever, they're watching them all, you know, day and night yeah, those around the, the whole inside. That's the close watched. Yeah. And I woke up and, and all that's separating us is the curtains. I'm 19 years old. And I had, so I had caught pneumonia, was in a coma for a month at Harbor UCLA. My family thought I was going to die. You know, all this stuff. My mom, who was doing good at the time, relapsed around that time. Um, I, I healed up. I started actually getting better. They drained my lungs from the fluids, put me in a regular room. And so, uh, and I healed up and my grandma's back in my hometown, Ventura. She's like, you know, you could come back and say with me. I already knew that probation was going to come and swoop me up as soon as I got into town. Mm -hmm. So I rode the bus or the train. And when I got the train, there's... Lo and behold, my probation, and I had been with them since I was 14, since that little graffiti thing, and um, they just, they, you know, they locked me up, and I maxed out my time. Okay. So, when I got out, I was off probation for the first time. Like, in, you know, I have been watched for, since I was, like, 14. Wow. And I'm using, and I'm out there in the streets doing all this stuff. So now I just hit the ground running, like using big time for the next 10 years. Wow. You know, from 19. But all the suicide attempts, um, other moments where I probably should have been locked up and, you know, I'm free now. Uh, all these moments of grace in my life where God had just watched over me and, like, yeah, somebody put, put there's, like, there's a God on one social media post she's like there's a guardian angel that loves you yeah i'm like damn you know like but God's i mean really watching it's like me, really dude. there's something i feel like i'm not saying that like god's not gonna save people that are like not gonna grow into something that's impactful for society and people and yourself but i am saying that you have such potential to be this gift to the world which you've proven through everything that you've been through with the help of God, right? To be able to become something now where you might not even be aware that you're inspiring so many people mm -hmm. and, and just 
maybe even just your work is affecting people in ways where you're getting people to think and feel and confront emotions that they haven't had in years or, or just, you know, you just have an impact that's, it's huge. And, Thank and you, so it's, it's almost like, you know, you're supposed to be here. Yeah. Like you're not allowed to leave. We need you here. Yeah. Daniel. Crazy. That's how <laughs> that's how I'm interpreting it from the from the outside. Um, I want to get to some questions because we got some questions from yeah. the people online. Oh, um, yeah. Have you? Are you? I do want to ask you though. Have you tattooed at all, or have you been? I know you say you used to work at a oh, tattoo crazy. studio, so I didn't know if you mm-hmm. had had done tattooing or. Yep. When I was uh, that was my first job. At, I was about eighteen or nineteen, and I did an apprenticeship at a tattoo shop, and I tattooed for a while. And this but is when you were using. I was clean when I started. Okay. You remember I told you I was in drug co- juvenile drug court? Yeah. So I I was clean at that time when I first started drug court. Mm-hmm. Um, or I was trying. I was teetered harder and back and forth, you know, trying to get clean. Still a young kid just trying to... Didn't know what the heck I was yeah. doing with my life. I was just living on the avenue. People were... Everybody around me is using. You did know. know what you were good at, though. Yeah, from an early age, people always told me, <laughs> and I just kind of knew I had it, but I didn't see anything coming from it. Mm-hmm. Like we, you know, how hard it is to be an artist <laughs> and like sell stuff, bro. Like I to paint stuff. I can't and even trick imagine people into buying. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna that. pay thousands of dollars, bro. Come on, you know how hard that is. Like, <laughs> yeah. It just did not seem like a real thing. Like, I'm, I don't know, but um, so you just like apprenticed at a place. Where so you there's were... people out there with God feedy oh. tattoos. Some of the homies, yeah. <laughs> Sam, the oh, she, well, the graffiti artist, the the mom. Uh, yeah, she got a tattoo. <laughs> we, can, we can take that. I know. Like, we can take that out. As that's well. funny. I'm like, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, a lot of the fr- friends and homies, and damn. I was actually 19 years old. So I, here's kind of how it went down. I was I had the keys of the shop, so I would come in early. I would clean. I would do the apprentice stuff, um, and then I would close. So when I finally got a booth, everybody else would dip by like 10. Mm-hmm. But I knew if I stayed later, there's a bar next door. It was Winchester's. Um, I knew if I stayed later, they're going to come trickling in, getting tattoos. So I'm making really good money at 18, 19 years old. Like on after-hour tattoos? Just all-day tattoos. Yeah, just making as much as I can. I'm Working like, overtime. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. You know, but the all the freedom and the money didn't help because I was like, man, I could just get high. Yeah, like I can go get dope. Like, yeah. It's your brain too. You're only 19 years old. So you're still a kid. I mean, I don't like, especially when you came up the way you did, it's like you're at 19, you still, you're not, you don't mm. have what you have right now mm. mentally to be able to understand this mm. big picture. You're just no. like, Oh, this is just a means to, I'm just in the hood right now. You know, I'm just going to roll back down to the Avenue every day. How was it like b- from drawing to like tattooing? Was that, was that pretty like a seamless transition to be able to like get your art from just being able to put it on a pad to put it on someone's skin? Um, do you remember that being a challenge? It's definitely a challenge. It's a whole different, medium and surface and everything but yep. you found your confidence in that in what in tattooing at, at some um point. i well i think at the time i did but now i look at what i did i can do in comparison i'm like <laughs> yeah. there's no way i could tattoo this yeah. without a lot of training and practice mm-hmm. and i also have a, a a huge respect for tattoo artists now that i see like it's a lifelong thing just like oil painting is so serious to me i was just gonna relate it to that yeah because you you haven't been oil painting that long have you four plus years four plus years you've been you've been creating art for decades yeah but that's crazy oil Oil painting four years bro i went into bro four years ago was 2020 yeah (laughs) Yeah. damn so since covid Mm-hmm. You've been oil painting. When was the first? When did we have mom first? In 20... 2021. Did so, I have oil paintings then? Yep, I did. Just yep. barely. You. Ju- I just started. Just yeah. barely. So was that like the the Statue of Liberty with the mm-hmm. 
That yeah. was an oil painting. That was right that first like year. I was doing anything and every painting my that my heart, my mind could imagine that I was inspired, I would paint it. And I was able to use that time to filter really quickly what I do and don't want to paint. Right. Yeah. Like I went through so much genre different genres, um, styles, but it always came back to the details. Like I've always been a detail guy. I love these details. Um, and that's what the painting has allowed me to um really like flex my skill, you know. Um I never thought I would be able to paint like I do now. That's one thing I was the other evening I was by myself and I was reflecting, bro, and it was like a really powerful moment for me. I was sitting there looking at my paintings, thinking of like this little dude from the avenue that's like has some crazy life, you know, and for like, you to blown that kid's mind. Right oh now. yeah, I was like, I would have never thought I could paint something <sighs> like this. Like as a little kid, like doing my drawings and stuff. Like I was just, it was, it was just like. I was able to look at my work and just be really happy about it, you know, and just love it and be like, "Chicken made me cry, bro." Yeah, just, no, it was weird. Just thinking about how, it, like, yeah. you were, we're talking about you being a kid and people are telling you that you're great, but you don't even have like, there's not a pathway in your mind that says like, "Oh, this makes sense" and like mm -hmm. an actual something I could do. Yeah. And now you're looking at your painting, saying like. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like I can't. <laughs> like I never even thought that I could do. Yeah. Like that. What I was doing would lead to this. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. wow. Especially going through the trenches on the way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Where it's just like there's everything to get you in the way to stop from that happening, and you mm -hmm. still found it. It just it just lends a hand to where like everybody has a path, and they just need to like trust that third eye that intuition and stop mm -hmm. not second guess themselves as much as they do i have a i have a big issue with that as well and mm -hmm. you know is there still like mental health like kind of issues that you deal with like as far as like depression or or mm -hmm. or things that are still a struggle that like linger from your previous life or have you pretty much I do have anxieties like that. Everybody does, you know, just the normal Fuck, stuff. I do. Yeah, I didn't go through the through the but, stuff that you're talking about, and I fucking yeah. got anxiety. But I will say that, Love like it. over ye with years of hard work, I have some of the healthiest relationships around me. Um, a bit, such a bigger understanding of people in general, and like what people can give to any sort of relationship. You mm -hmm. know, I've gotten better at. Um, being less selfish and nourishing those relationships, whether it might be um, new new people I've met, mm -hmm. um, yeah, tr uh, you know, I, being like a painter, it's such a and believe it or not, it's an ego driven thing. You know, you I'm trying to put my best work out there and my bet, you know, really want to put my best stuff out there for people. Um, but like lately I've been learning to have a looser brush br brush style, which is, um, feels a little bit more like stylistic and like trying to live my life a little bit more looser. I think when mm -hmm. my first like 10 years, I was so worried about getting everything wrong. Like I'm going to mess this up, I'm gonna mess everything up. But like life is so messy, bro. Like in a real you know what i mean like everything is not perfect for me and that's one thing i try to show not only like in the paint but my art is like i i'm very aware i hope this comes out humbly of that i'm very aware of the talent i have but i still get discouraged and have my hurts and my struggles and life feeds me humble pie all the time mm -hmm. and i try to keep that you know, like keep a level head, but still use my my talent to like connect. And I think that's one thing, especially like the street art is um, it gave me a connection to people that I would have never had because I'm out there on the streets meeting people, mm -hmm. everybody, the city, you know. Um, I mean, and that's what brought us to me. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I mean. Yeah. So yeah. when you're doing murals, people are. 
We're chatting it up. Interested. We're, we're chopping it up. You can't I'm go five people. minutes without someone coming we're up. We're kicking it. Some yeah. people are not nice to me. You know, like all kinds of crazy. You get stuff. everything. Yeah. Some people come by and have like they're too sitting chill with you. Yeah, Talk too to comfortable. You. So what's bro, crazy like, is like you yeah. grew, you grew up in the hood, so it's like you already have that thick skin for people coming up and being uh, being kind of out of pocket. I love stuff. it though. They're like they be. It almost feels like to me like they're just so comfortable that they're just like intro induct like I'm family. You know, I'm part of the the yeah. street, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're in the community. Good. You're yeah. here. You're doing it. Yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. You did uh, Larry's Barbershop down there. That whole block. Cause. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you fucking did the cross the, the street, block. too. We yeah, all over this. All over. We're out here. That's so awesome. Weird. What kind of I advice would you give? What kind of advice would you give a person who is really maybe coming out of that darkness into being able to turn their life around and really be in their purpose? And live a fulfilling life. I would just say give yourself time. No, just give yourself like a little time to let things work out. You know, um, when I was first getting clean and sober, like it was so, it, I remember it was so difficult for me to learn it, to like understand business and working with people. But now I, I definitely feel like I have a, a larger grasp but only over time mm -hmm. you know i think that it's easy to get fomo and feel like you're missing out or oh, yeah. you you need to rush through everything oh, yeah. to like get perfect and be just have everything on lock you gotta have it but, right now yeah i don't feel like like my art I, I could look at all my paintings and still just tell you things that aren't perfect and someone else could probably chew up little things, you know, but, um, Oh, well, of course. But I mean, then it wouldn't be your art. Yeah. I f if you but, want AI to come in after you, yeah. you paint it and just like, <laughs> you know, curve up all the lines <laughs> perfect and shit, bro. Like yeah. now that we've taken away all the character, we're taking away everything that makes mm -hmm. it, makes it you. Which is, you know, I feel like AI and those things that come in are making, you know, people like you even more valuable. It's just something that, you know, maybe it becomes so crazy that it's it just all we want is just some hand painted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not really intimidated by AI. Bro. Yeah, I don't think it's you can like do a bad you... like everything else. Like anything that comes in super quick like that usually just burns off. I feel like what's the 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 bitcoin thing was I think, so big i think it'll fall in its place in the uh, sense of like you know spell check yeah like oh that's no, great it's got its uses, like yeah. that's got its use right yeah, like okay yeah, yeah, yeah perfect yeah. okay yeah you're right yeah that's how i wanted to say it so there's some some ways but but like you're saying it's, it's definitely not a threat to 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 fine art fine art <laughs> it might be a threat to mcdonald's if you're trying to like, if you're trying to just be like taking people's orders like ah we might be able to figure that out you know what i'm saying well, but i think like me and like other artists i enjoy the act of painting right like i enjoy mixing my colors and sitting down in front of this canvas um and spending my time crafting this thing i think other artists enjoy that and that's something like AI is not going to be able to take that from me. Exactly. It's something I love to do, you know. Um, and AI stuff just looks, uh, I'm a hater of AI, bro, big time. Like the, cool. yeah. Um, you should and be. And it's also, I think it, it, it can't, it has a wonderful imagination, but it doesn't. It can never match my delicate brush stroke. Wait a minute. You know? Like, is there AI like, that actually paints canvas? Uh, they, they've got it, it makes art. They do have AI generated art. You've seen that online. Yeah, and I'm talking they, about they like do. like a physical mm -mm. machine that goes no, and I've like. Seen it. Yeah, there's one, no. and it's like this. It's like, and it just looks so sloppy and just dead and like. So, that's but it doesn't. Every, it doesn't turn into. But they something? could machine learn the. Yeah. your style like somebody could t put in somebody's <laughs> like, style and say i want oh, god feedy no. art well, it's a big thing because there were a few artists that weren't under public domain right there's a certain art that's under public domain that's free to use but they, mm -hmm. when the ai art was first starting 
one of the prompts was, I can't remember his name, but he was a big digital creator. Mm. He's still really big, but people were using his name through prompts. And then when he saw the AR, AI art, it had his signature on it. You know, it's like a weird God thing. Damn. It's that's, a weird thing where like right. you, someone uses your style to create something. Um, bro, your style down to your signature. No, yeah. It's, like, it, holy shit, bro. To create anything they want. And so... Um, well, that's where there could be fakes and bootlegs <laughs> and there can be things that are... Yeah, and then I worry about the younger generation that just went through three to four years of school to learn this skill. Um, and, you know, they're stoked about getting there into the world, and then they see this machine that can pretty much do exactly what they just, you know, their passion. Um, but painting, it can't paint. It can create images, mm -hmm. but it can't paint. That's There's that's... so much... Yeah, there's so much in a painting um, that, like, I think if you were to see my paintings collectively, you'd be able to look at them and know this is done by Daniel. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, the, just by the style and the brush stroke, there's just something to it that feels like it's got my fingerprint on it. And that's so hard to do. That's like the goal for an artist. Well, that's all the AI is trying to do is just trying to be like you, mm. you know, yeah. and you're, you're you. So you're like, yo, I'm the authentic. They, yeah. They can't mm. be like AI because then we'll be like, that's AI. No, it's like They're we're... trying to be like a human. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you, and so that, that, that means that it will, if anything, it'll only drive it more valuable and more you know, sought out to have a real person do it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to some of these questions, though. We, oh, have, yeah. we have some people come in here and ask us some question. <laughs> okay, here's a good one right here. What professional training do you have, if any, in art? If none, how'd you start painting? So we did talk about yeah. this a little bit, but... Yeah, I got... Um, what was it? Uh, eighth grade... Is that middle school? I think that's middle yeah, school. Yeah, eighth grade art class. <laughs> that's where it starts? That's where, that's my tr traditional training. And then what? high school advanced placement art. And the thing is, I look back I'm, and I'm like, man, I could have been somebody. You know what I mean? Been somebody back then. Because I remember the art classes, they were having art shows. This is in high school. They're having art shows, and I was having a hard time getting my homework done. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just not a studious person. I was using, but um, everything seems like it possibly could have been lined up for me because they put me right into advanced placement. All the teachers saw my potential, um, but I was just struggling so bad at home, you know, with yeah, all my... Yeah, if you would have had a different all my stuff. home life, then it would have been right there. Yeah, all the and then the using and just everything coupled together was just too much for me to handle as a kid you know I was just a kid trying to make it um and then the next 10 years obviously I'm using I might have drawn a little bit uh here and there and then when I got clean and sober and I was up here and I would draw in the mornings they say to if you heard 10,000 hours yeah you heard yeah that, to become like you know efficient in something mm-hmm well, if you think about it, the past 10 years, like drawing an, an hour every day. Um, then when I started painting, I would, I did a painting every day. I was, I'm just, it's like a mindset for me, you know, mm -hmm. to learn. Like a workout. How can I learn? Like, mm -hmm. what can I learn? And sometimes it's not that easy because if we knew exactly what we were missing, we could just go fix it, you know. Yeah, but 100%. sometimes we find down the road the things that we're, maybe we're a little bit more open to looking at mm -hmm. our weak spots. Um, but I, so I, not only have I put all of my time and attention, but um, being one big thing is like being able to take a realistic look at my strengths and, and my weaknesses as hard as it is to look but to look at both of those, you know, not, don't don't only look at my strengths but, and think that I can't improve, um, but don't spend too much time there to where I don't improve. Yeah. 
and then don't only look at my weaknesses to where I just want to give up, mm -hmm. but spend enough time there to, to know like, okay, I got to work on this hand. I'm not good at hands. I know I'm not good at backgrounds. I wasn't good at noses for a long time. Now I really feel like I'm getting these noses down. I'm like, yes, like these certain things, you know, but uh, spending doing it's usually in between the paintings where I feel like I learned the most because I can do the painting, but to sit back and look at it and just know, um, I got to put more work into this spot right here, you know. So do you kind of reflect after each painting? Always. Oh, I'll just look at the paintings mm. and I know next time this thing comes up, I've got to work on that a little bit more. Um, like I was saying, I was really lazy with noses, with ears for a while. Um, yeah, and so now I'm pretty confident with the noses and the ears, I think. And so I know I know my weak spots as far as, like, mixing paint, um, like, colors. Uh, I'm, work, I'm learning on composition right now, really kind of focusing on all the fundamentals um, of art. Like, I'd known all these things, and it's easy to get in the mindset that like, I know everything. Right. And none of this stuff's going to benefit me because I'm just so good over here, but, um, still just diving into the things that I know I need to work on and I'm avoiding. Um, and then I did take some online courses, one online course during the pandemic. It was like a weekend course, just two days. And the artist, um, Will St. John, he's out of New York. His him and his fam or him and his wife were both they taught at Ateliers, which is art schools. Mm -hmm. And it was like a Zoom. So there was a lot of students. But he went over the stages of painting and he went over like mediums, which are um mixed into the paint mm -hmm. and how to use oil paint. He really gave a good foundation for things that I couldn't find. That you can't find online. Was this specific to oil painting or? Yeah. The so, mediums will add texture. Texture, um, transparency. Like the thing about oil paint is um, the great thing about it is it has the oil in it. So it has this oil content that can be exploited. It can be thinned down mm -hmm. and you can have like clear, thin layers and then it can be built up heavier. Mm. Um, so. So you can do like it, it helps with backgrounds and like ocean, like you can kind of mm, like blend textured, textured. textured. Um, and so when you have when you have a painting that has all of these things crazy. like flat areas, um, yeah. textures, mm -hmm. heavy brush strokes, it just has a like a um, a full meal of different techniques. It's more interesting to the viewer. I see. Like. It's actual painting as opposed to just like a painted canvas. Uh, done a lot of a lot of deep dives onto oil paint as a substance. Like, what is this, right? Um, why is it so special? They haven't had to improve it mm -hmm. for thousands of years. Yeah, that's like that's they improve wild. everything, but oil paint they've kept the same. You know, it's like the perfect formula because for you painting. could tell a story back a thousand of years yeah. ago with paint. Yeah. Wow. Have you? I'm curious. Have you ever ruined a painting? Like trying to perfect something? I would say um, I've learned to leave the imperfections, you know, and just kind of let them God. slide. Like I could go back in to fix things, but I always see things that I'm like, this don't work. Uh, and I'm also not a good gauge to tell you, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to say this is a good painting. You know, I feel like somebody else would have to say that. Mm -hmm. I love that. But I do have done work that I'm proud of. Like, I've looked at uh, all my paintings. They all have great moments in them. Not a whole lot of stuff that I I would hang around and, like, look at. I think I, move, I spend so much time with it, I move on pretty quickly. But that Pieta has one hand, the mother's hand. Mm-hmm. I love it. Like, I look at that hand, and I'm like, if there was something to achieve, that hand was it. <laughs> like, I did it. That's fucking <laughs> Out awesome. Out of everything, you know. That's I look the at mom this with one the hand. Son. Yeah, I look at that hand, and I'm like, that's the hand, you know. This is, if you were to look at these master painters, their whole paintings might look like that. 
you know, that hand just had whatever it was. It's like, felt like I really achieved something right there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think just being open to being taught by people. I, I do meet a lot of artists that are great in their realm and then I'll talk oil painting with them and they'll kind of turn into like a yes man and pretend like they know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But I can clearly look at their paintings and be like, you need work. But yeah. I don't want to say that to them yeah. because in their head they're, you know, they've, I also know what it takes to make good art. It's so hard. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to make a good painting. It's not just do this and then you'd be good. Yeah. No, it's like uh, there's, you you know, it's a lifestyle. It's learning. I mean, the um, fact it's that expression. it was 2020 in the pandemic, and you were like, "I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to take this course, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get on this Zoom call and learn more." I feel like just, you know, and you have you were already pretty much bona fide at that time. Had done enough work to, you know, mm -hmm. but to want to push your craft forward even more to get yeah. into that oil painting, to start yeah. getting into that fine art. Like that fire. You gotta put your money where your mouth is, homie. Not like everybody's like some got people, that. they got to, bro. If they wanna get better, I always encourage young artists. There's tons of free online, or there's free online stuff, which people just glide over. Mm -hmm. But there's also people that are teaching classes that don't take that long. It's gonna cost a couple hundred something bucks, but you can learn so much. Um, from a teacher, having a teacher, I wish that's why I like to share sometimes, um, my process. Cause I wish that when I was coming up, I had a good example of somebody that was going possibly in the direction I wanted to go. Maybe not exactly, but a little bit of information to know how to do this art thing. Cause it's such a mystery. I've been trying for years to figure this art thing out, you know, like I want to get it right. I want to do it right. But what it, I didn't have nobody to ask. It was just mm -hmm. walking around bumping my head, getting big old knots on my head by being Learning stupid, by, yeah. bro. So you, but you have, you didn't have any issue forking out that couple hundred bucks to invest in yourself to learn. My supplies cost more than that. You know what I'm saying? To do like, the yeah. yeah, I was, I'm all about it. And I had been staring at this dude's art. Like, he's like a living master, bro. And I'm like, man, I like, saw his stuff i couldn't believe it i'm like this dude's alive right now so like, this is like you're the like point. 300 bucks 400 bucks you wanted to from learn the master bro yeah. like <laughs> yeah. he's gonna give me the formula wow yeah that's cool and then he, and he didn't did? give it all and i had to do some deep diving over time and like not only listen to excuse me podcasts and um do my own research but it was enough of a foundation to understanding mediums and paint, you know, how to do a painting, make it look like it's complete. Um, tons of great information just in a two day workshop. But I was paying attention. Um, yeah, I think people need to take more advantage of that. If you want to advance your skill, like honestly, I kind of kick myself in the butt that I didn't go to art school there's a lot of mixed emotions with young artists about art school. You know, it's going to form you into this thing. But you're going to be can't... ready. That's the thing. Are you going to be ready to, like, accept mm -hmm. the all the information? Because if you're 19 years old going to art school or you're 20 years old going to art school, but your head in, isn't right yet. Trying to have fun. Yeah, you're trying to have fun. Just go have fun. And yeah. then when you're 29, go to art school. Yeah. Like, it's almost like that's the other thing that we all rush by. Like, oh, it's too late. Like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. too old. Where it's like, bro, like... How old are you? 41. So you're 41 years old, bro. Like, you're just getting started. Mm -hmm. You've only been oil painting for four years. Tip of the iceberg. Give me 10 years, bro. I'm tripping out. And, and yeah. it's not only the fact that you have the capability, but it's also the mentality to say, give me 10 more years. Yeah, give me more. I'm going to do bigger or better. I'm working on yeah. some big pieces. Oh, real quick. Um, Do we still have time? Oh, we got time, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you want to answer questions or should I just drop this? If you got, you drop yes. it. Drop oh, okay, it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll go back. We'll, we, got about, we got about 30 minutes. No, I'm, so I'm working on uh, with um, David Morgan from Lucky Leaf. We're gonna, working on the uh, Tears of a Clown mm. underground art show one day only. Whoa, what? June, first Friday. 
That's yeah, cool. it's going to be underground. One night, I'm going to have all my paintings um, in June, so I'm going to have some new stuff. But it's going. I wanted to have the Tears of a Clown art show like as my next solo show. Yeah. And I've got all the paintings, and it's going to be underground, and we're going to do it like clown theme. And you kind of go through this door, and you walk through the back, and you go through these steps, and then you start going through another long hallway underground, and you get to this space that's like super cl- – it's like – um, surgical clean it was like a and it's the kind of this big open basement area and we're gonna have balloons and like a uh, elephant on the little ball <laughs> no but it's gonna be like clown theme it's gonna be uh um That's awesome. yeah it's gonna be under the big top you know clown theme step right up okay must be this tall yeah 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 to view this art <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> But yeah, it's gonna be. That's I think it'll be, be sick. sick. Spokane will be like, you know, we need more cool stuff like that. Just a that dope so one night turnout. Cool. Oh please, man! Roll yeah. through. It's gonna be popping underground. You know, I've heard Spokane has some spots because yeah. of like a steam thing, and they have mm-hmm. some, some underground spots. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a spot right downtown, and it's not something that that, every, that, that you see a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And you know what's crazy is the amount of similarities between just like music and art too. You know where where you're talking about just like there was like AI coming in. Can we were mm-hmm. talking to Jimmy at Amplified Wax talking about AI can come in and tweak all these yeah. knobs and do everything for you, or you know you got the people that that are in there like really paying attention that are passionate about the sound mm-hmm. and giving it a you know. There's just like so. Many many similarities in, in between the two those two mediums it's it's mm-hmm. just very it's very interesting it's art yeah it, it's the arts well you can't cheat it either Mm-mm. that's like the ai it's like you want to try to cheat it but you know if you want to be a great artist the only thing that you can do is put in that ten thousand hours plus and it becomes you yeah it just becomes you you it's, it's almost like you don't have a like this is this is Mm-hmm. It's just through me now, right? It's not like it, it, it started off with a thing where you were, you were just drawn, you're just doing this, and then now it's this is you, mm-hmm. and that's when it becomes this undeniable thing that everybody wants to be a part of. Is when it's, wow, this is unique. This mm-hmm. is the person. Let's go to another. It's hard to get there though. Really oh hard. well, and yeah. that's it. That's why it completely separates. You know, the people who look at it and say, oh, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And then the people who put in the work to do it and that are I, you're that person. But the, the most important thing is that you're that person that the person gets to look at and say, I can do it. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Because yeah, Daniel did I it. So. And Daniel yeah. didn't do it from from a privileged family yeah. with, with a million dollar estate that sent him to art school in upstate New York and gave him all the perfect... Mm-hmm. No, this up. was molded out of pain. This is molded out of out of head bonks. Mm-hmm. That's why I try to s- set it up for people that are aware of that. You know what I mean? That there's no superhuman thing, but but it's all flesh and blood behind the scenes. You know, with just a real life. I think that's huge. Mm-hmm. I think that that brings so much character to the art um, because it's it's just this true story, which is why you know. You'll be on fucking Joe Rogan's podcast one day telling this story, man, because it's it, it. You are just such an amazing person and have overcome so much. And uh, like you said, it's like that ten years from now. Like, just give me. It's yeah. just that. Just give me. And you saying, "Hey, give me ten years, bro." It's gonna be a year and a half, and we're gonna be like, mm-hmm. "Holy shit!" Bro. Yeah, I'm trying to work on some <laughs> big, large master paintings. I'm really like, excited on, for you, that's man. On the, it's on my kind of bucket list, you know, is to. Um, work on some big, like with a bunch of people, you know, like acting out a whole scene, just oh, wow. big, huge, um, beautiful paintings. Um, working on one right now that's like seven feet tall, or I haven't started it yet, but it's a big, tall painting. Wow. So seven I'm feet trying tall. Trying to keep pushing myself um, further and further. And that's another thing that's helped me grow too, is like, I'm always trying to do stuff that's above my capability or at least feels a little bit above. That way, even if I don't hit the mark completely, I'll at least get pretty close. Yeah. And it'll pu- it push me further. Um, How do you deal with the imposter syndrome? This is the first time it hit me in a long time. 
and usually I'm really confident. It's a roller coaster, but I mean, usually I'm really confident with my artwork and my life and the way that it's all integrated together. Um, and you know, who I am and, and having confidence in like my knowledge of painting, I'm usually pretty good with that. But when I had this imposter syndrome the past week, it was really awkward. I was like, dang, who am I? Where am I? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> insane that you've been doing it for so <laughs> yeah. long and it hits you at, you know, it hits yeah. you at year 2024 to say, oh shit, I'm, I'm dealing with this thing. Now, this isn't something I've been dealing with my whole career or the whole time I've been doing this. It's just like, you're still facing new challenges. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I think because you see how I did the clown oh, yeah. thing recently where I dressed up and I yep. did the photo shoot and all that. It felt like, um, yeah, because I put so much of my creativity into this persona, I love the clowns lately because I put so much of my creativity and I shared that part with people. Um, it just kind of, uh, you know, it had me asking a lot of questions, I think, um, because it was so highly received, This, the clowns, you know, people love the clowns and I've been slowly in like introducing them into my artwork and I'm loving the clowns, but I felt like because it was almost like an act that it caused me to, you know, cause it will cause anybody to start asking questions, you know, like the Joker, right? And yeah. What's the one, um, Joaquin Phoenix, how he kind of went crazy after yeah. playing the Joker. Um, but it, it was for a painting. And so that's like my thing, you know. Uh, well, the caption is impactful too. Yeah. Well, so many people have, they love clowns. It's crazy. I mean, it's such a conundrum because it's so many people love them, so many people are terrified of them. Mm -hmm. You know. It's been a big symbol of humility for me. Uh, I am feel like I'm surrounded by people that are just striving for success um, at all costs. And my life doesn't feel like that all the time. It feels like real stuff's happening. I'm having to like make my way through this crazy world all the time. My interactions are like, they're just very intense maybe because I'm an artist, but it doesn't feel like I'm just like this top dog stri like type of person. Like I'm still have to deal with my, call my mom. No, you, know? you still feel like a normal person. You're yeah. like, you are a normal person dealing with life mm -hmm. and you're sober right mm -hmm. so that's another thing too that just the raw uh emotion of just going dealing with all the feelings where a lot of us are out here numbing we're numbing to some extent you know what mm -hmm. i mean so and that clown has just been the perfect um you know symbol for like hey it's okay if everything's not perfect yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Like, What's the quote in this? It's something that's just so good. The clown is a reminder for myself that I have a heart and can that can still be broken yep. for all yeah, my sad like clowns that. out there. Like that shit that, hit yeah. me deep when I read that, yeah. when I read the caption in, as a whole. But then that end piece really got me. Uh, let, let's, have, let's see what another question, because we got like six questions. We don't have to hit them all, though. But I want to say... Uh, Shout out to uh, Chiquis64 for asking that question about the uh, the formal training and painting. Hope we answered that question for you. Um, okay, not that. That's not a good one. How? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me let me let me just read these. Some of these are just not even relevant. Fly through them. Everything's relevant, my boy. <laughs> okay, hold on. Fly through them. Okay, do you think or feel that living in your current environment affects what you paint? Most definitely. I've, um, I think every artist should, if they're really pursuing it, live in a city where they have access to art. Seeing art, like, in person, I wish that we um, had, like, bigger museums and stuff but um seeing art in person is so influential to be able to like sit 
at the feet of the masters and the people who have gone before you and just like stand in awe of their work. Um, it's such a big thing. But what you see, I mean, for most people, most artists, I feel like what you see and your vision comes from what's around you, you know, the stuff that you um, paint and talk about. So like if you see somebody that's in Montana, they might do a ton of landscape paintings. That's their world. They know about that. Mm -hmm. They can paint it and probably make you feel like you're learning something, you know, that they know. Mm -hmm. Um, so it definitely, everything, I think we're highly influenced by music, the musicians we look up to by everything. Um, so that's like one thing about art school, people are afraid of being like too highly influenced and maybe they won't be able to be, have their individual voice or something. Yep. Same in music, same thing. Like you mm -hmm. would listen, if you're trying to work on something, you don't want to be listening to a lot of other artists because you're afraid that that's going to bleed into you know, you want something that's going to be truly uh, like you mm -hmm. want to take your inspirations in a healthy way and mold them into your yeah. own, but yep. you don't want it to start like you to start. I being... feel like that comes later, though, after the learning process, like the more you can learn, the oh. more those mm -hmm. influences start to like turn into something Trying to make sense it's almost like a, a language that you can decode mm -hmm. at that time now that you have that you understand the language a little bit mm -hmm. yeah no it's I, that, that makes sense shout out to david david lopez jr 77 for the question there this i mean this person said how how to make your skin tones okay um so that's a complicated question, especially without showing somebody. Uh, but so I guess find when you're painting a portrait, we're just going to start with a portrait. You would find an average skin tone, right? Like what is the average color for a face? Um, I think I use was it burnt sienna for a lot of my base. And then I use a lot of reds and greens and all of my skin tones. Um, and so once you have a base is like, this is what the face looks like. This is the main color. Um, I'll make a few darker colors of that same base color. One's like a dark red and a dark green. Mm -hmm. And then a few light colors of that same base color, a light red and a light green. And then I'll try to pinpoint the highlights. Um, I can't tell if you guys are understanding a word. I'm locked in. Oh, okay, cool, I'm cool. I'm locked in. I'm or locked in. Complicated. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm there. I'm okay, painting. Boo. Yes. All right, cool. I just couldn't tell. I'm my... understanding what I can. Yeah, yeah. Reds and greens and... I can imagine we probably looked like, whoa. I just wasn't sure. <laughs> Could just be humoring me. <laughs> well, you know, don't call yeah. us out. <laughs> I don't <play. laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, I'm just joking. I see um, the reds and greens. Yeah, and so um, I usually use the same formula with almost all faces, believe it or not. I will use find a base wow. color. So the 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 base, there's different things. There's so many variables can do with the temperature of the painting, of the space where the face is in. Okay. The ethnicity. Mm -hmm. um, the temperature, uh, the lighting can change everything. So there's these different things I'm looking at uh, when I'm making like a, a, a skin palette. Oh, shit. The so, lighting. So the light, yeah, like this, the lighting can be more of a yellow bright light, which would make this, this skin right here look, uh, you know, a brighter pink or something does that make sense yeah but it's but not. if we go in this hallway it might look like a darker so how do you so yeah so there's just a lot of critical decisions but at the end of the day i feel like it doesn't even matter i mean yeah you want to get some pretty pretty accurate as as much as you can but another thing is understanding what paints i have like, I understand every color I'm using and what they will do. Like, okay. that's a good place to start because when I, if I have 16 colors I'll use for, a fa for skin tones or different variables, understanding what each of those will do as opposed to I'm just going to 
look in like you know close my eyes and look in the pantry and hope that all these spices make something the spices that's the perfect analogy too you know but i know what these things are gonna do when i mix them Mm -hmm. um so i have you know like i said i've i've done a little bit of research and i've painted a lot of faces but also i i mix all of my colors out of a white base so i have lead white which is a lead-based oil paint, which is kind of toxic, but you can order it online. But what that lead does is it has the ability to be used transparent, which most whites don't. Um, So, yeah, creating a base, but also um, the face has different parts, believe it or not. Like this up here is, um, I think, is more yellow. The nose is usually more yellow. There's more greens down here around the the mouth and um, greens all in here, a little bit. And so, I I really lean on different values of red and green. Can you switch that one page over? Um, that same picture. Oh no, watch it. There was one like that kind of zoomed in on the face, but you could see it a lot better. Yeah, there's just a lot of greens and reds in there. Um, Yeah, you can see those greens, those reds, too. This guy says, hey, fool, why you paint my tia? Uh, Hey, fool, carnagas. That fool's funny. That fool's really funny. (laughs) That's what I laughed at earlier. It got me off guard. Yeah, Man, that's awesome. awesome. I mean, like, the, what I always notice about your stuff is when you zoom way in on it, how the, yeah. st- it's the sparkle in their eye is, like, so prominent. Like, when you do an eye, like, when do you put that little, when do you put that life in her eye? Is that at the last touch? <laughs> He's I, like, well, no. Because um, like I this do. part. Yeah, no, it gives that real, it gives, makes it real, like you said. Yeah, yeah, that high contrast of like yeah. something dark within the light. Well, I'm talking about the little, the, the sparkle when people like, you can mm-hmm. see the sparkle in their eye and it's a painting. Like you said, it's something about it that makes the painting human. Like it Hell makes yeah. it makes this, you know, you're really convinced this is a real person. You know what I mean? Like and it that's just... what the texture of the paint does. Yeah, exactly. Like, because, like, a camera, if we take a photograph and duplicate it and put it on a wall, it still looks kind of flat. Yeah. But the paint gives the illusion of a texture, almost like you could touch it. Watch. Can you can you switch that over to the left? Uh, maybe one or... Wait. One more? Yeah, right there. It feels like you could touch it. Because oh yeah yeah because on the of screen those, yeah it feels like it would have texture on here yeah <laughs> and that's a that's like a, an illusion of its own because the thinner layers are very flat but the layers that are or the um, areas of the face that are raised up are where the heavier paint is okay so it gives you that illusion of texture and like depth um it's pretty cool that is yeah. fucking awesome man that is so, so it's just it's something that for someone who can barely draw a stick figure, like it's just it's just impossible looking and it's fucking sick. And that was the thing. So my teacher is like ten times better than me. Or he's not really my teacher, but he's the artist that I kinda I watched his stuff. Um mm-hmm. so I can look at my paintings and just be just completely hate everything about them you know <laughs> what, what I mean? do you not like and, about that no i like this painting okay. but i s- still can i could see things that need work um like what like what do you, just uh, if i just so curious what are you looking at when you're like that needs work um well i mean i feel like i could have spent more time maybe on the forehead uh but like i'm saying at the same time i've You've got to learn to allow those those imperfections to shine through because I think when people are looking at a work of art, they're looking for some kind of connection mm-hmm. to the artist. Like even music, like you go with the or like a play, you go with the hopes that you're gonna find a connection with the person that created this, mm-hmm. and a lot, that's found in the flaws a lot exactly. of the time. 
Well, and we don't see it like you see it. You know what I mean? I didn't see the and that's the same thing with like music too. It's like when you when someone can you like I hear things that people don't hear. Like I'm like, oh well, this, and then they're like, well, I love that. It's like, oh, well, I was gonna uh-huh. take it out. They're like, don't. You're like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's like you know the way you're perceiving this over a hypercritical uh, perfectionist borderline trying to like make it right like or i could have done better because that's part of our nature is we need to be better so that's okay but at the same time like you're saying it's like these are the things it's almost the things that we think we should change a lot of times people end up appreciating Mm -hmm. you know that's what they love out of it she looks mean and that's why that's why being the the um an artist is so difficult because the ego struggles against that. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to put your best, everything forward in front. You want to put your best work out there. But like you're saying, a lot of those flaws are, are really where all the beauty is found out, found. um, What are you, what are you really excited about moving forward from where we're at today, right now? what what's what's getting you excited? Do you have any projects coming up? I know you talked about this, this uh, this clown yep. uh, viewing show that's gonna be pretty fucking badass in June. Yep. Um, we're just kind of getting to the end of the time, so I want to make sure that we highlight anything that you got going on. You know how um, people can book you, how mm-hmm. people can can. Uh, I know that your page says like no DMs. Hit me through the what is it like the email or the website. I prefer emails if, um, yeah, if I'm working with like a new client Mm -hmm. because I don't necessarily know how they work. Um, and an email, you know, you can jam pack an email with a lot of information. Um, so I prefer emails through via my website at godfeedy.com. Um, I try to get to the messages. Sometimes messages fall through the cracks uh and i'm not able to get to everybody Mm because i do have so many messages coming in at one time uh sometimes you know you just look and be like okay i gotta get back to this person in a little bit and then so is persistence annoying or is it useful is it good for if they usually i respond to every email almost if i'm super busy i might look at it and forget to get back um sometimes i get emails that uh bounce back like they've put in the wrong email address or something um i almost always try to respond to serious inquiries um but i think i just gotta have that like no dms because people will Will take a while take a little bit they take advantage of the direct connection but i love the direct connection but i still do have to keep healthy boundaries and maintain a professional you know, level Mm -hmm. with people. Um, But I still try, if I can, to respond to the DMs. Um, Sometimes, you know, I'll try to get to people, especially I read the most most heartfelt comments in there, dude, and I might not even respond back, like, because I'm just, maybe I'm drained or something. Maybe I'm tired. I had a long week, but I'll see it and be like, you know, they took their time to say something genuine and, and really... You know, to them, it was, you know, from the heart, and I love that. That's so, I feel undeserving when people do that for me. But the best way to reach out about something is via my email. Um, For murals, I try to work with everybody and answer questions, whatever questions they got. Some people don't know how to go about getting a mural. Um, I do have paintings for sale. I know I don't advertise them like that. Mm-hmm. But everything must go. But you, av- but you <laughs> advertise the shows too, and like these shows are like where oh, people can yeah. come up and and they can they can purchase the art mm-hmm. in person and meet you, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're in Spokane, so like this one that you have coming up in June, like people will be able to roll come through. through. Yeah, everybody roll through, say what's up. I always feel bad when I don't get to meet somebody that's been like messaging me or positive and they like you showed up at the first show. Remember? Yeah. I was like, where was he? Where were you? I was, I was was a little intimidated because I I never met Godfrey before, but then also I was like, 
you know, you were just so overwhelmed with so many people coming up to you that I was like, you know, you just, you don't want to be that, that next person to come up and ah, Hey, like you want that genuine time. And it all paid off for me because I get to get your undivided attention here on a podcast multiple times. So look at that. And that's the beauty of the internet. I do try to talk to everybody though. Bro, it's the biggest compliment. People come out on their own time to see my artwork you know like i would not be here without all these supportive people so what's the website godfeed.com okay g-o-d g-o-d-f-f-i-t-i.com um i've got a lot of prints on there some of my mural work um i do need to update it for like a little custom um order form or something for people that need would like to reach out for commission paintings because i do do those commission paintings um once again my prices are flexible Mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's i try to get do it if i can for people um as far as selling original paintings murals uh commission work i try to work with work with people cool yeah, no, I appreciate it because honestly, you only have so much time in a day to work on art. So, <laughs> if you're willing yeah. to put 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 some time towards a commission, that's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, seriously, man, I, I I can't thank you enough for for coming by and sharing your story, and uh, you inspire the shit out of me. Cool evening, yeah. Seriously, yeah. Seriously, man, like it's uh, we don't take it lightly. Like to sit here with somebody that. Um, has overcome so much and 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 still hungry t- for so much more. You know, that's it's a perspective when we come on the podcast to be able to see and and take that home, mm-hmm. you know, and implement that into what we do. And so that's that's our hopes for for this podcast when people when people watch and listen is that they can, you know, take a little something here and go home and implement that into your life whether that's that gratitude whether that's that little bit of fire whether that's pushing forward like you know coming from what you came from and being able to still just create this dope life man Mm -hmm. like that for anybody out there struggling that gives people hope i hope so man that we all have potential you know um once again i don't feel like there's anything super special with me as a person that different than other people so i feel like you know where there's a will there's a way Mm -hmm. you can people can dig themselves out of the worst circumstances that's one of the most beautiful things about humans is our ability to overcome adversity Mm -hmm. um and i continually try to share my story because it's so big that's is I think the one of the biggest keys with my art is that story behind it. It's not just the art, but it makes it so much more impactful. So much more impactful. Like, oh, this dude, you know, might have this beautiful artwork, but the reason why I'm doing it, I'm trying to open people's eyes to things. Um, it's been a wild ride. Yep. Yeah. God feed you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, Brennan, for making us look good. Brennan. Appreciate you guys. Yep. Tune into this podcast when it comes out. You're watching it live. Tell a friend. I love you guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff.
you know, going up to post. Yeah. That was like 350 feet. Okay, so it's like, oh, so then you did all that. Yeah. Yeah. On, like, this rough gravel with this much space, <laughs> like, on a little ladder in between traffic for a month. <laughs> one dude, I was halfway through the mural, and it did not look complete at all. And one dude's like, looks like shit, as he's driving. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I, was, I got really offended. I was like, what? I was like, bro, I just started this thing. 